What is up, friends? My name is Thwack. My name is Lord Sturm, and welcome to a, a, a chilly, but not as chilly as yesterday, Frosty Fosting's Top 8, where we're going to be going into the Smash Ultimate. Starting on the loser's side, and I believe these players are rip-roaring and ready to go, from what I can estimate. It is Loaf versus Leon yeah. to start things off. And we're actually going to get right into it. Um, picks, ads, all of that was covered right before we got in here, so we get straight into the Smash action. A couple of Super Mario villains. Yeah. Duking it out. I don't think I've ever commentated this matchup. I've commented plenty of Wario and Bowser, but. I don't even think we've had a heavy in a Frosty Top 8. So this is going to be a fun one. And I'm not sure if Leon and Love have. Not, I don't believe so. Duked I mean, it out before. They live pretty far apart, right? Leon is from Tri State, Love's right. from Minnesota. But yeah, we're going to go right into Pokemon Stadium. The matchup begins as you'd expect it to. Wario getting those. Aerial combos on Mr. Bowser himself. It's up to Bowser though with these higher percents to kind of nail it down, hold these stocks as long as he can, and dish it back to Loaf. Starting things off a little bit slowly here, just you know, poking and prodding against each other, but the damage is already adding up really fast for Bowser. And ooh! Yeah. He tries to catch a landing with that grounded up B, and a little bit off the mark, he's gonna get punished, and Loaf gonna just race ahead in this first match of top eight losers. And already just continuing this ledge trap situation. This fire breath is what Leon needs to bait himself out of the spot. But oh, off of the bounce of the up smash landing hitbox, able to turn around into a back air and create a ledge trap the other way. Leon knows that Loaf wants to jump out, and that's why you're seeing all these, these big up smash attempts. Yeah, that's great awareness by Leon in general. I mean, like, fire, fire breath is something Bowser opts for a lot of ledge. So you have to react with a jump or roll something else. So Ooh. it's a 50 50 butt. Mini waft. Gonna secure another stock, really cushioning Loaf's lead right here. And Loaf really has all of those options scouted on the linear recovery of Bowser. That's one of his biggest weaknesses, right? Especially when you have great edge guarding options and the floatiness of Wario. So, man, it's gonna be tough for Leon to get back to the stage, and he's stuck there again. But ooh, a footstool helps him out. Bro, Loaf terrifies me on platforms. I mean, like, I've been watching him do this all tournament. He's a shark under there, and he'll always come up and he'll always just tomahawk with his neutral B on the platform. Yeah, every shield is a risk when it comes to just being able to apply that bite, even just from center stage. Right, if that boy's under me, I'm jumping every time. I'm just getting off of there. But doesn't Ooh. make it back. I'm sure in his head, he thought he'd be able to, which is why he opted for that lower angle on the Wario. The bike was sniped immediately by the Bowser forward air, and that took away a ton of Loaf's options. Uh, all of a sudden, Leon's back in this game. Yeah, it really was a leap of faith. And I mean, that's just the Bowser special. Wario has that same kind of X factor where you can shred stocks, but the opposing character can shred them Ooh. right back. Oh my God, that could have been everything. That could have been the game and the turnaround that Leon needed, but instead, Lope hanging in there, looking to catch a double dump for himself, and that dare lasts just long enough to get the hit in and set up another ledge trap. Yeah, opted for the down throw and just hail married in that situation. Couldn't get the read though, and now Leon off stage, trying to get back. Fighting for his life. Yeah, oh, oh, but Leon just barely hitting the last hits of those neutral players to help him out, but the slap of the forward tilt all the way across stadium. Even the heavy Bowser is going to fall victim to that one, and Loaf takes game one. Yeah, Loaf had a really good performance. The first half of that set looked very dominant and, like, in control. And then, I mean, Leon showed that adaptation, like, instantaneous, like, four minutes in. And, uh... While he was figuring it out, the gears were turning. I think that lead, Loaf kind of cushioned for himself, really set him up for success in that game one. Now, Loaf, if you guys are just catching up today to the begin, like this is your first time turning into Ultimate Top 8 this weekend, uh, Loaf lost in pools. Oh, Loaf, really? Loaf lost to Toad in a game oh, five he did, set yeah. in pools that were not streamed yesterday. So this is, a, if you're just catching up, Linden made the run through Globo, Draxel, Archdice from Chicago, Raven King from Chicago, and Butter from Kentucky to make it here to top eight. So what a run so far from Loaf and could continue here on Battlefield. Yeah, that's a run of champions. Wario, a character who's not very apparent in this Midwest region outside of Loaf himself. So if you're not prepared, I feel like he can always sneak up on you, mm -hmm. you know? And comeback factor, of course, always on the back of your mind, right? But Leon, no stranger to come back himself. We already almost saw it happen in game number one, and now with the full control of Battlefield here. Right there, duking it out. Fighting for center stage. Loaf kind of controlling it, though. 
Gonna take Lee onto this right side. Yeah, the lingering hitboxes of Wario's just aerials and the way he can drift with them. Oh, okay, going for the grab release. Is this Brawl? Yeah, that was yes. at least seven pummels, <laughs> and that's gonna be a stock for Loaf. Just, that j dropped Leon in just such the perfect angle for the down. And again, that multi hit downer just seems to go st cut straight through the Whirling Fortress. Right, and if you play these characters, great back here by Leon. If you play these characters, that's a flow chart you're used to almost every time, right? Yeah, se seemed really practiced here for Loaf. However, Leon answers back. Yeah, waits for the regular get up. Hits a neutral air on that top platform. Doesn't get much more out of it. And now they're fighting for that stage control once again. That might have been, a, I think it was a misinput where the fire breath was going the wrong way. But it doesn't matter too much as Leon here able to attack on a little bit more damage. But oh, there's that platform pressure you're talking about. However, Leon sneaks away. Yeah, that up tilt was a little bit off the mark. It looks like he had the read a little bit missed execution, <laughs> but the waft, he had full execution there. And that's going to be a stock for Loaf. Now is that like approximately the same time that we saw Waff oh last gosh. game at 5.30? But Can we just talk about the call out on that up smash? You, you gotta be able to have the, the cojones to press those Bowser smash types, right? You can get big punished if you whiff them, but it, it, you see the reward, right? Right, nothing's set in stone with this character. So like the like difference between a good Bowser and a great Bowser is the one that can really just feel it in his soul and hit those. And Leon is known for that for sure, but he's taking a battering and a bruising here on this final stop. But, ooh, the turnaround up tilts. Yeah, he's just letting them fly one after the other. But Leon gonna get a pretty big grab here. And Leon's just kind of playing, he was playing zone control with the bike. He wasn't, he didn't want to pick up the bike, but he just wanted to take away any option of uh, Loaf throwing the bike off the stage and then getting that resource back. Right, and it's like, if you converted it into something more, like reading an air dodge and hit, oh, oh my goodness. What? Two up smashes. You came from the future. Back to back stocks. You came from the future. I'm a prophet. And read the I'm a prophet. <laughs> oh my God. Sturm just squeezed the life out of my left arm. <laughs> he literally took my blood pressure and. I've seen commentators' curses before, but not like within frames. Yeah, he's. Within a... frames. Like seconds, yes. Maybe a stock, yes, commonly. But that was. Perfectly timed, and Dude, now we're going. And that's to game one of those up smashes that does psychic damage. Like mm -hmm. you're gonna be wary of that up smash for the rest of the set, and Leon kind of has that in his pocket now, right? He can choose to use it whenever, or he can opt for other options. But I mean, since Wario is airborne so often, it's shown that it is an option you need to utilize a lot in this. Oh yeah, you, you need you need to swat that little fly out of the sky. You know, you know, Wario is a heavyweight, but he just he does not move like a heavyweight in the air. He's just so drifty. Right. So ambiguous, especially just with all those areas linger and linger. Oh, right. jump right over him. He's basically a heavy Jigglypuff with a motorcycle. Oh, and we'll see the, the regular Jigglypuff a little bit later in this top eight. True. Okay. Shout out Base Mage. And look how much slower they're playing this one. They're not throwing out any unsafe moves, but yeah. the fact that they both have a command grab makes these platforms so much scarier for both of them. And I love using that Bowser Bomb to the ledge. If you time it perfectly, you see you can read the, the jump. You can time it for a ledge trump attempt and then go for uh, an aerial off of that if you like. If oh they my linger goodness. too long. Yeah, that's one of those things you have to play a character a crap ton to be proficient with. Otherwise, like if you get Shulk on random or something and you like backslash trying to snap the ledge, you're gonna miss every time. It's kind of funny. Chuck's the bike, a little proximity projectile, Ooh. but Loaf retaliates. Take center stage for himself. I think the bike exploding saved Lo from getting shield poked there in that instance, but oh oh, what a turnaround goodness. back air. First options a plenty here from Leon, who takes a commanding lead in game number three. Dude, Leon is just a menace at this ledge, and I think that's where lo has been bleeding out the most this set. No up smashes required. He's just been showing a really clear mastery All of right. how Wario needs to get back on stage. But as I say that, Loeb finds his way back into this set. That's the interaction he needed to just stop the bleeding for now. And as long as you can get this Bowser off the stage a second time, you know, that, that's a recipe for success for sure. Yeah, and then maybe even a third time after that. And we might see another waft here. Oh, full waft just came online. Oh, there my. you go. But the wrong hitbox connects. And instead, Leon just kind of floats lazily to the top of the last zone. But yeah. the zero to death, I suppose, cannot be stopped regardless. Loaf rolling with the punches, not letting that hitbox Really what a fight comeback. him. Yeah, no, and now he's holding stage. Like, he turned this one to three stock lead 
into a one-to-one -one style game where he's in control. And that is just <laughs> sheer determination as Loaf continues to stay in control. Oh, but what a great combo here right back for Leon, who's showing signs of life on the last stop. Gets a ledge trap for himself. Right, Leon with these decisive crouches. The wheelie helping out. And now the forward tilt could decide the game, so you can see Leon fishing for it a little bit, but. Ooh, expects the regular get up, doesn't quite get it. And that F tilt is just gonna take us home. All that clawing back done by Loaf just to get punched at the ledge. If you're Loaf, how are you feeling right now, Sam? Uh, if you're Loaf. Are you optimistic still? What's up? You know, Loaf did show some of that that veteran, like you said, you know, you can tell when someone's put thousands and thousands of hours on a character, right? Mm -hmm. Like he goes for the, the, the full walk combo. Uh, it whiffs on the hitbox, and you know, a, a less experienced Wario player, right? They, they'd be like, ah, oh, man, I, I had it and I lost it, and then they would drop it. But instead, he continued to zero to death off to the left side, almost as if that was like, his plan the entire time, right? So right. he showed his composure in that stop, even just when his string was interrupted by the wrong hitbox. So I think he'll show that same composure here in game four when he's trying to uh, make this two game comeback. Yeah, that W or not, that zero to death on the second stock is going in the highlight reel. Oh yeah, that, that is the clip of the set so far. And this first stock here, five up airs straight, might Woo! need to go in there too. Finds his way in, he ducks and weaves around the forward tilt this time. Yeah, Wario's air drift coming absolutely in the clutch to avoid that Bowser back air after he upbeat a little bit too high to the stage. Slowing things down a bit. As soon as I say it slows down, there's just a back air coming right to your face, Loaf, and then you're down one more stop. Yeah, and that's one of those back airs where, I mean, you had nothing to go off of. You're swinging into a spot where you think they'll be, and it's usually semi-calculated to an extent, but it was a very good call out by Leon. And now this is that situation, but what a great tech to keep Leon alive here. That looks like this Bowser was done, but well, instead... That interaction was very baffling, and that back air, even more baffling, but if you're Loaf, you're taking that to the bank. Oh, and yeah, you get to turn around for a quick zero to 40 combo, and the string continues. There is another waft online, and okay, it's just the mini waft. Good for damage, but not gonna KO in any sense of the word. Right, that's one of those situations where it's like, I don't know Wario that well, so I'm wondering what else converts in that situation. So I'm wondering if saving for a medium or even large waft on this last stock could show to be more beneficial. I think, I think it was just a matter of timing. He actually started that combo too early on the clock. Like if he had started it like 10 seconds later, it would have been a medium walk. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, but that get up attack is prime pickings for the back air out of shield. Yeah, he's gonna pay the price. Below coming straight off of that halo platform, swinging. This could be Loaf's last lease on life in this bracket. The, the loser's run of destiny could end right here if Leon has his way. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. Oh, oh. Return to sender. Yeah, that was some. That was an X Games bike trick. I can't even lie. <laughs> Shout out to Love, but now he's bleeding out on this last stock. He's really got to nail things down if he wants to remain in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Okay, taking a little bit of solace under that platform as Leon was sharking for another one of those fast falling back airs as a burst option to end this game immediately. Yeah, while well, these platforms are terrifying if there's a command grab, they're also bomb shelters against these characters too. Mm -hmm. Now slowing things nice down little bunker to hide under. Yeah, they're both just fighting for center, taking turns shielding one another's unsafe aerials. Lo finds his way back, gets the hitbox on the up B. Now and a backdoor resets potentially. Yeah. The ledge trumped to back air, and okay, how far are you gonna go here, Loaf? Loaf wants a game five. He's gonna find that game five too if he can just take things slow, oh! and but he whiffs the waft, and Leon punishes accordingly. Looking for, I think, either a roll or just a shield held a little bit too long, or maybe the start of a jump. Those were the ideas, but then I think he full hopped instead of short hopped the waft, and that's gonna cost you. Just the, living yeah. on the razor's edge, you miss input by just a little bit, Yeah. and Leon will make you pay. Those wafts came back to find him that set, but he, he played it really well. And it's one of those things where there wasn't the miss input, or if that one read was just a little bit more on the mark, that was his set too, you know? Mm -hmm. Good stuff to Loaf, who again has made a pretty great loser's run to get all the way to top eight. It's pretty rare to see someone lose in pools and then make it the whole way. But his run will end here today as Leon uh, takes out a Midwesterner. And there's a couple more for him to go if he wants to win this bracket. So uh, we'll wish him luck later on. But I believe we're going to go to the other side of losers next, if I had to guess.
Eichen versus Ned. Ooh, a Chicago a classic. The I'm... good news, Chicago guaranteed top six. Right. The, the bad, bad news, news, one of them's going home right now. So, and I believe uh, actually he had some other Chicago team kills for them to make it because Ned had to beat Atata to make it into the loser side of top eight in the first place. I'd be interested to know, and this is one of those Chicago Smash stats type numbers, what Ned and Iken's all-time set count is. They traded blows quite a bit at Ignition's um, yeah, I'd in imagine 2021. It's very volatile. When when Iken was a... Uh, Iken, if you don't know Iken's story, he uh, started out as a fledgling 3DS Wi-Fi Ryu player. Yeah. All the way back when he uh, didn't have, I, I don't know why he's stuck to 3DS. I, no, the, the 3DS Wi-Fi community was, was pretty tight knit as well. So that maybe, maybe that's was why the stuck time. To, or just didn't want to buy the Wii U because it was a terrible console. But uh, oh, Wii this U, was after Wii U <laughs> release. Yeah, he, he stuck with 3DS for a very long. Whoa, time. Whoa, that's awesome. Lab labbed his heart out, and then uh, I know a lot of people that Chicago, he lived in on the West Coast. Uh, right, San Jose. Yeah, San Jose. Mr. Came, Genesis himself. <laughs> true. Uh, came here to Chicago for college. That's why he is a, a Chicago mainstay these days and way to claim and love to root for Iken, the Twitterless wonder. Yeah, it's hard to root against Iken. While he is so much newer to our scene, I mean, like, in comparison, right? He's mm. not that new, but. Well, we're, we're old farts yeah. at this point. We've, we've been around. <laughs> oh. <laughs> According to Jacob. Yeah, oh snap! Ned, Ned is up six to four in sec. Oh, Iken is up six to four. Yeah, I did. I did think that Iken was up, but the, yeah, they they did trade a couple of blows when it comes to ignition victories during that that summer of 2021. Iken famous for his uh, not the most recent Genesis, but Genesis eight ninth place run. Yeah. Ned, Ned has been a mainstay at, at tournaments for such a long time. So he, he's very well known in, in the competitive ultimate scene. Yeah, I mean, they've both had their fair share of breakout performances at Super Majors, mm -hmm. but um, both of them are just behemoths in our own region too. And this is one of those things where match number 11 could go either way. I mean, six to four, that's basically 50-50. We're flipping a coin at this point, but the better player is gonna come out on top. I also think it's been a hot minute since they played. Ned hasn't been at too many of the, the local events these days. Yeah, I imagine most of those six to oh! four matches are Pokemon Trainer, but now we are in the Sephiroth era. And what a snipe of an Aerith killer to uh, take the first stock in a dramatic fashion. Not the Aerith killer, man. I don't think that was not the canonic name. I thought we rooted against that. Uh, yeah, Hell's Gate is the canonic name. Thank you, production. So Battlefield's the pick. Anyways, if you know Sephiroth, you know he's a glass cannon. I mean, and he, he absolutely could against die Ryu, you spawn here. at kill percent. So it's not going to be too hard for Iken to level things if he can find his way into this wall of back airs. You, you talked about using these platforms as a fortress, and that's exactly what Ned's plan was. Just putting the platform in between, taking away any kind of nair approach with, between the platform and then the giant sword, right? Really yeah. hard for Iken to get in at the moment. Yeah, the giant sword is basically its own character. It's like a 2v1. Now Wing is on <laughs> deck! But Iken saying, I don't care, taking his first stock. What a perfect angle for Iken to sneak in under the counter. That, that counter would have been really a, a, a violent turnaround and given Ned so much stage control, but instead we are even Steven. Yeah, a lot of those counter a lot of the counters in this game will have that. Thing where have that vertical presence where they'll go under a little bit too, but mm. Sephiroth is very much just in front of you. Oh, and there's another grab release. I think Iken was definitely looking for just like an early cheesy kill. Right, those grab releases can convert into the world sometimes when through these fighting game characters. Yeah, with this rage in Iken's pocket, he probably would have been killed Ned at like that 50% mark, so Ned needs to play super careful. Yeah. He will take these free hits on the focus though. They do right. a little bit less, I think it's 50% damage, but free It's nice damage. though, because yeah, against Sephiroth, you're not dealing with too many multi-hits, so you can get away with a lot of these focuses back to stage. And I mean, Ned just has to respect it sometimes. Goes for the call out down smash though, gonna whiff, take a fireball, and he's a little bit pressed to the right side of the stage right now. Yeah, Ned saw that shield get to, to a tiny pebble size and he needed to jump out of there, use all those jumps in the one wing. Just create as much space as he can. Woo. What a sneaky recovery from Iken. Did not expect him to go that high, and neither did Ned. 
Yeah, and they're just taking turns sending each other to the left and right side of the stages. Iken, though, holding onto this stock like a legend. And that, that means Ned's win comes, yeah, that forward tilt at a safe distance or those back airs. Iken does not mind. At this point, Iken, like, all the damage is just free like, real estate, right? 175, you're playing with, like, an extra stock. Right. Basically. It's like the I didn't expect to live this long anyway mentality, so I'm going to make riskier plays or make safer plays to get as much extra credit as possible. But we are equalized. We are at a one-stock game here in this game one. Top A losers. This is just what we ask for if you're a fan of Chicago Smash, right? You want these games oh to go goodness. to the wall. Hello? Whoa! Geometry. He pulled out the protractor, said, I need this <laughs> angle. And it, wow, he didn't like directly convert off of that focus attack. And instead, I mean, instead just got the spike to the blast zone. And I'm, I don't know if you could hear on production, but Chicago getting allowed for their boy even though they're both their boys in the grand scheme of things. Oh yeah, but I, I can will always be the proud favorite. He's just, again, if you meet the man in person, just absolutely pleasant individual. Loves talking to anyone. He's one of the friendliest people you'll ever meet. So he's obviously gonna be a crowd favorite. But yeah. Ned looking to silence that crowd as he's got a Pokemon Stadium. That's one of those things where I'm like, okay, you think you can't be surprised by Ryu after watching him for so long? And then it's one of those things that really just catch you off guard, and you're like, dang. Yeah, the thing that threw off that whole, all the equation there on that last stock was the side beat from uh, Sephiroth. Yeah. It, it, it forced a scramble situation, and Iken just was so confident in that scramble. Okay, there's a multi-hit attempt at stopping a focus that looked a little Randy Scrandy, right? Like, just like, what are you doing going for that up these strange angle? But if you think he's focusing on the way down and going to drift to the left, that was Ned's call out. Right, that's free damage, and that's a lot of damage Ooh. from the multi hit to that, but that's even more damage in terms of a stock for Iken. Catch that American air dodge going to uh, avoid any attempt at shoryuing to the ledge, right? Literally. Shoryuing to the ledge is a commitment, even if you do find the perfect angle. Oh, but yeah, struggling to land, Iken, no stranger to catching these landings himself, and now just making it a two stock game. Yeah. Burst of damage. Both, going both ways here in this set in top eight losers. Yeah, Ned's gonna stack so much percentage on the Iken there. A little side B action comboed with a grab. You're just waiting to detonate and take 40%. And this is gonna be yep, oh exactly goodness. the same setup as game number one. Ned knows when that sure you is time that you have to go that low. It's hard, man. I mean, when you're in those vertical situations as a character with a vertical recovery, you're almost easy picking. You can mix it up and stall a little bit with certain characters, but I mean, once you're net and you get a feel for it, your window to hit it is quite large. And, oh, you can visually see it when Ned did that down air to the platform, how low that sword goes under the platform. It's like a whole character under the platform, right? Right, it's like one of those things where obviously it's not the easiest thing in the world, but the window to hit it is way larger than most characters. It is one of the very what a much perfect sneaky ones focus. Yeah. Perfectly timed by Iken to just nullify that side beat and allow him to land back to the stage. Just when you thought you had a grasp of Iken's focus patterns, he starts pulling them out like that, you know? No. Okay, this is definitely Ned's game to lose now. As that, that guy gets sent Cute so counter. far away and it even shows the sparks. I thought that would just be a, a, a soft counter. <laughs> but you see how powerful it is against these linear recoveries. Yeah, Ned with brilliant answers to especially the low re recoveries, you know? The horizontal ones are a little tougher, and sometimes he's higher up in the air, so they're even harder to react to. But he really showed that you don't want to recover vertically against him. It's not necessarily vertically or horizontally. It's just predictably, right? Yeah. Ned is going to have that timing on lock. He is a veteran for a reason. And you need to take advantage of the weaknesses of any of the 96 characters on this pack. So that is good stuff to Ned as he ends up this set one game apiece. We are going to Hollow Bastion, I believe I heard the music for. I mean, it makes sense when Ryu's deleting characters at like 40 to 60% sometimes. Oh, yeah, and Sephiroth is vulnerable to the 40% death. Oh, He's one yeah. of the lightest characters in the game. And tall, for that matter. Oh, yeah, easy to combo. 
And now there's less platforms to hide under, especially when in the, the ledge scenario. And that's exactly why I can pick this stage, I have to think. He's going to stick a side B on him. Woo! Try to react to maybe like a roll that would back. Have, that would have beat the focus. Remember we saw I can focus those, oh, yeah. those balls, the side B balls? Woo! And there, okay, so there you go for the horizontal recovery. It was just at a timing that Ned did not predict. Right. Okay, so he just has to hit these verticals at timing he doesn't predict. Pivot grab, very slick, and oh, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, catches the punch's reach and makes his grab just look insanely long. And Iken's recovery just a little bit too short. I wonder if he missed like the, the perfect input on Shoryu to recover. The chorus in this song just adding so much tension to this match, and Ned adding even more tension to the right side of the stage over here. Kingdom Hearts music is known for its drama. That is a fact. <laughs> True that. Yeah, that's to Yoko Shimomura, of course. Brilliant composer. Severov being a slight part of that drama. And there, now he's trying to hunt for the horizontal recovery, just using that little forward air poke. But there goes a Sephiroth. In yeah, the blink of an eye, you missed it. If you're Iken, you really needed that. Obviously, you can kill at any point, but you don't want to keep taking damage before you can get rid of that first stock. That, that's more so even a mental hurdle sometimes, but Ned, he keeps taking him to this right <laughs> side of the stage and holding it so well. Iken gonna find his way in though. Let out a few blows of himself. And just barely missing that second up air, which could have been the ladder combo that Iken needed. With all this rage, this is actually kind of a scary spot for Ned if he falls victim to another up air. Oh my oh, goodness! Oh, see you later, shield! <laughs> he was gonna charge Giga Flare and said, you know what? Here's this. A any smash attack would have done, really. Yeah, there's an abundance of smash attacks in this game, or down smash attacks in particular, that'll just take your shield to town. And Sephiroth's down smash is one of them. Mm -hmm, especially when it's just spaced perfectly and it like, lands on center center of the shield, right? No yeah, way it literally for it makes it look like a bubble's being popped. Great reaction to up B again. I can no stranger to making the most Oh, there you go! Goodness. The hardest call out from Iken, or from Ned. We saw that predicated in game number two, right? When Ned went for that really high uh, multi hit up B. Just, and it kind of looked like random out of nowhere. Like, where, where are you, what are you, was that a misinput? It, it just looked so strange. But it's just predicating when Iken is going to focus, right? Yeah. If you lock down that focus timing and you're up a stock, seems like an easy recipe for success for me. That was the foreshadowing to what we just witnessed in that up B call out. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, in an, in an anime when the pro tag gets his butt beat by the hand tag like four different times, but he starts to learn things throughout that really weigh into how he beats him in the very end. Oh, and it, yeah, and it cuts back to every single lesson you learned from, from missing right. your opportunities. Right, and then... every single multi-hit up B. That was the one, but it still could be Iken's story to write here. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of smash left to be played between these two. Going for that early heavy focus, just to knock the Sephiroth away, take him away from hiding under this platform. I think that's the key. Yeah, I do like this stage for Ryu specifically. But it's just hard to land against Sephiroth a lot, so you want to stop getting in these aerial scrambles. Yeah, if you can keep him in the corner, that will be your recipe for success, but... Oh, okay, going for the, the tech roll away instead here is Iken. Iken makes it look terrifying to land sometimes, too. Like, Ned wants to get to this lower ledge as soon as he can, but Iken throwing out another Shoryu. Not quite enough to kill. And there you go, the Tatsu is fresh this time. Going for that instead of the Shoryu, which he just used twice before. That is going to be the first stock lead in, in a little bit here for Iken. Yeah, funny enough, it's like the jab is all he needs sometimes to really get those moving. So he'll fish for it, and when he finds it, that's a stock. But Ned lashing back and getting his own stock. Yeah, the fade back double back air, just a, a classic trick from Sephiroth, right? You, you think when he whips the first one that it's punishable, but instead he just catches your jump and makes it pay. Yeah, that's the major look. Tries to catch a jump or even a normal get up with the fireball, it's not going to be enough. But he's kind of just feeling things out. These are proximity fireballs. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely just a, a, a game of I'm going to make your neutral a little bit harder here rather than turning anything super 
uh, violent off of the fireballs, right? And one wing angel shows up again, and then Ned's sneaking under the platform. He's starting to get these tech chases. This could be scary, but high recovery helping Iken out and call him out on the landing with the Nair. Instant Shoryu, stock lead. Yeah, some of those Nairs were specifically connecting because of his drift and wing, but I feel like Iken just nailed it down and hit that Shoryu, which he needed, but that is so unfortunate. Very weird knockback from the Dare that time, unfortunately, for uh, Iken. He could not quite reach with the Shoryu. And now Ned has, has a second lease on life here in game number four. Might be able to shut the door. Yeah, we keep coming back to these one-stock games. It's never a complete show of dominance. But Iken really needs this if he wants to show life in this set. He's getting poked and prodded away. And yep, okay. He, Ned is able to react if he thinks he's going to miss on that. And a couple more of these up bees are just so violent. But somehow, I can recover. Somehow, some way, he comes back from the depths. Like I said, it's not over. I mean, Sephiroth's at kill percent. We know how re these Ryu definitely situations go, yeah. Ned gonna land with these back airs. I can not letting it slide. Really sneaky upbeat just to get yourself planted on the ground here from Ned. Doesn't High look. in the sky. Ooh. Another one? Does it kill? Yes, it does. And Ned finishes the game three games to one. A statement victory there, especially as, like, you know, that's how Ryu is, right? Ryu has that comeback factor. You always have to be ready for just the burst out of nowhere, like we saw in game number one. But Ned shut the door very confidently there. Mr. Octo Slash himself. Yeah, that was a magnificent showing and a, mag a magnificent showing of adaptation, too. But I mean, I can put on a show. He put his heart and soul into that set with Dark Wizzy before getting into top eight. Mm -hmm. That was a, if you didn't catch that one, that was a great set to watch. Uh, yeah, go find it. will be up uh, eventually. We, be, we got more Smash to stream though first. So. Right, obviously it's not favorable for either player, but I mean, all they can do is hope that their Chicago brethren gets to work and uh, puts on a show for the rest of the tournament. Indeed, so that was our losers uh, top eight matches. We're gonna be jumping over to winners semifinals now. These guys have not lost a single set yet. Although, I do believe there have been a couple of nail biters. This one, uh, this tournament, top 64 was best of five. And so, some of the sets that they, these players played previously were, were pretty close. Like, Riddles went to game five in his pool. I did see that. And he eventually did pull it out, of course. So, that is why we do see him, the number one seed and the top 10 player in the world, for sure. Uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna be seeing him first or if we're gonna be seeing the other side. It's, it is, yeah, it it's is like Riddles a Riddles base major. I, I saw the Puff appear in my peripheral. Yeah, Puff Kazuya. Yeah. That is one of the matchups of two, all time. Two in players and two characters you're not gonna see in this region often. Mm -hmm. Actually, you have Ed Boy. Or Explorin. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's go take a look at the bracket really quick before yeah. we get into our next match, guys. So there you go, you see our top eight loser side matches here. Ned tramping 3-1 over Iken in the Chicago team kill. Leon winning 3-1 over Lo. So we're going to Riddle's base mage next. Salt One versus Apollo Kage. Man, those are some aggro winners. These are semi some matches. bangers. Yeah, Puff Kazia and then Roy versus Snake. And this is Apollo Kage's snake, of course. This is the A button snake known world renowned. Yeah, I feel like I see these two players play at different regionals and majors quite often. So it's going to be fun seeing them play over here in the coldy Midwest. Yeah, um, they, they made the choice somehow, some way to come out here when it was like zero degrees wind chill yesterday. <laughs> it's, yeah, Reynolds is from Canada, of course, so he's, he's Right, no he's from people. the tundra. In fact, he is the tundra. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if he can put some ice on uh, base mage's winner's run here, as these two, play. they're playing Ridley versus, uh, Ridley versus Jigglypuff is we're killing. But, oh, okay, so that, that means we're just seeing a little I know, that's bit That's what of, caught me off guard earlier. I was just watching him play Rid <laughs> Ridley in my peripheral. And I was like, there's no way, right? Yeah, it's, it's just, I guess, a little bit of puff left. But I didn't know that was the hand warmer. I thought they, I thought they hand warmed already. Oh, that's not even... <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm getting baited left and right. Well, guys, I hope you are uh, enjoying the Frosty Fostings stream. There are many, many, many tournaments going on this weekend that you guys can check out. But, of course, you should uh, stick it here at uh, Unrivaled Tournaments. Give the stream a follow. Give the stream a sub if you appreciate the work these guys do all around the Midwest. They do be doing the work. And not just here, they do it at many others. Um, 
more to come this year, too. Mm -hmm. And of course, my name's Sturm. Uh, this is Thwack. This is Thwack right? here, indeed. Welcome to our annual podcast. Right. The yearly. <laughs> five years running. <laughs> this is Frosty number five for us, huh? Isn't that wild to think about? Yeah, time flies. We've, we've been doing this gig for, for some the, time. The Thank Smash you. 4 Frosties were some Frosties for the books. Yeah, that was uh, Earl of M's statement win, I believe. Yeah, was yeah. That, uh, or, was that, or was that the first Ultimate one? I actually don't recall. I think Earl. Yeah, that was the first Ultimate one. That was not a Smash 4. Oh, yeah, that was Earl of M and Frosty himself. Oh, yeah, Frosty at Frosty's. Yeah, that was iconic. But finally, no Ridley. It is, in fact, Riddles up to the plate. What if he did pick Ridley, though? And the <laughs> baiting was all for... And basically, he was like, yes, I was laughing. He was, like, warming up against Ridley intentionally. <laughs> He'd be the prophet. You called me the prophet earlier? Nah, that'd be, that'd be basement. All right, how on earth does Jigglypuff fight Kazuya? This I have to see. Because what does Jigglypuff want to do, right? Jump a lot. Jump a lot. What does Kazuya love? Jumpers. When people jump. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where you have to ground yourself and grab more than you're used to. We, we could see a lot of uh, crouch box shenanigans, right? Because Basement does have one of like, the, the lowest profile crouches. Oh my god. And immediately Basement's coming out swinging! Zero to death explosion! Wait, 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 wait. But if Riddles just runs off the Halo platform and reciprocates, that'd be a set. It's I, I interesting. Think, I think we're just going to see a lot of explosive KOs in this set. As, right. As, Immediately demonstrated by baseball. Yeah, Jigglypuff comboing Kazuya much more than we think, but there's obvious there's that obvious offstage predicament too that Kazuya is gonna have to deal with later. And they're look, just using just weird hurt box shifting, right? And what a snipe on the high recovery! Right, that, that was high recovery set him up for the perfect hit off stage. That was all predicated by base mage's dash, just going under what Riddles wanted to do. It was insane, and this this. Edgeguard, I feel like it, it went from the one stock to the other without a single beat. Yeah, he's just holding him left and right. And what's interesting is how fast this is moving compared to what we just saw in a Ryu Sephiroth set, you know? Lots more slow play. They did have projectiles to work with, but these characters really just wail on each other like some bruisers. Mm -hmm, yeah, they're just gonna go in. Fists are flying to the wall. here. Ooh. Ooh, the get up attack actually gonna do that fun get up attack interaction that we all love so much. Sending Riddles to the side, but he's gonna make it back safely. Missing an important smash attack there. Yeah, somehow crossing over, getting the hit in. And okay, good recoveries though, so far. Ever since that, that one edge guard, Riddles has been recovering pretty confidently, I believe, in this game one. Maybe he's got the timings a little bit more figured out. But it might not matter for the result of this game as that clash goes base mage's way in a two stop. Yeah, after that high octane first stock from Base Mage, he was taking so many trades until he got these offstage scraps that always turned into his favor. So good awareness on Base Mage, always converting those offstage interactions. But Riddles, I'm sure he's not sweating. He has some adaptive plan in his pocket that we shall see shortly. I, I, that must be what I underestimated when thinking about this matchup on paper, right? Is just the way that the way that base mage is going to shift his hurt boxes under all of the, the rising EWGFs and all just the strong moves that Kazuya has, maybe Puff can just go right under them. Right. And now we're seeing the switch to Terry. And what do you think Terry offers here that Kazuya might have been left to be desired? A little bit more mix up on the recovery for sure. I mean, Terry's yeah. not really like a strong recovery character, but you have a little bit more mix-up potential, I can say. Right, and you're he's... not drifting in the air for nearly as long. I mean. Also, look at that! how that crack shoot just like takes up so much space. There's really no way that a puff is going to like go under that hitbox, right? Right. Oh. There you go, the invulnerability right. on that up. He also helps Yeah, he has that invulnerability and a little bit more of a hurtbox to trade with, a hitbox to trade with, rather. You're going to sing his way back to the stage, but... No cross-up to be had here. Up smash, delivered straight to Puff's face. Yeah, just called it out right when he let go of shield. Went for the really low crack shoot. And look at the mix-up. That's what I was saying. What a great recovery. And now Go is online. I think Puff could just explode, potentially. Right. Basically, just going to have to play much more of a rock, paper, scissors game in these offstage interactions. 
Forward smash not going to close it. A little bit unfortunate. You want to get rid of that meter as soon as possible if you're his opponent, but Base Mage finds the answer. That was a perfect angle to back here. Just go all the way around the invulnerability of the upbeat. And oh, you're dead! That's a, so unfortunate. What Very a great call out by Base Mage. It's one of those two frame, or one of those characters that always, if not snapped perfectly, can go a little bit above the ledge. And if you capitalize on that, those are going to be some early stocks. Base Mage definitely capitalizing so far. How low can you go? Doesn't matter. Right, he fell so low without even pressing a button. He kind of just hovered next to him, you know? Yeah, if you, if you guys blink, if you, if you went and got a snack in the middle of our, our, our vamp in there, you might have just missed those two games they won so fast. Base Mage up 2-0 on the number one seed of the tournament with Jigglypuff. Right, if you're Base Mage, those are a huge, like, motivational boost. If you're the type of snowball player that I believe Base Mage is, you're going to want to carry that momentum, right? But Riddle's going to take a deep breath, go into this third match um, with everything he learned. And I mean, that first set, it looked like he adapted really well. He just has to keep it going like that. And, and sticking to the, the Terry guns, not switching back to Kazuya. Right. I think that's when you're really showing. That's when you're really just showing a lack of confidence, right? When mm. you switch characters too often. But Riddle's not doing that, sticking to the and that's okay. He's going to find his way back to stage. A little bit of a trade on this left side of the stage. What a scrap. Yeah, very scrappy opening here. Good tech to stand. Triple my words over here. Goes straight for the geyser. The geyser going to be a little bit off the mark. And base mage is going to find that first stock. Brilliant maneuvering from base mage just to keep Riddles off the stage. Don't let him into neutral even one time because we know what happens when Terry is in neutral. He can right. kill you. And that will kill Jing. Remember, Jing left lightest character in the game. He just exploded there off of the power deck. Yeah, he literally power dunked the puff. He played basketball. A little bit of a space jam. Gonna find his way back to stage with power dunk again. And there you go. Just crack shoot to pressure the platform. Right, no one wants to be the one who's under the platform when the other one is whipping a button over it. And the double jump is burned here. Okay, I believe he did touch the ground, though. Yeah. Did he? Oh, okay, okay. Still looking for that. Just trading in the center of the stage again. Oh Another my goodness. Another great tech. Riddles with the, the text to stay alive and oh. you, are you okay? I don't think so. That's that awareness you have to have when your character has a spottier recovery because you're so used to these offstage scrambles and tech situations. And Riddles showing quite the mastery of it. We have a last stock game here in Winter Semis. I know what a turnaround on the neutral here. Setting up a down air as well. Man, this, this pressure from the base mage has been so strong. But you might be dead here. Oh, instead. Okay, okay. I liked base mage trying to fade down for the up air instead of just going for straight rust. This up air rust, I believe, would have connected. Woo. Yeah, and base mage, the last two games especially, has had a really great record in calling out these air dodges. This game, they're not panning out as much. And Riddles closing out those last two stocks in a total of like 25 seconds at least. They were scrappy stocks, but again, you see the veteran presence of Riddles, right? Like you're used to those scraps. You know when to tech to stay alive off the stage in those spots. And then another dash attack just did not cross up and that's a perfect punish from Riddles. Keeping him alive in this winner's bracket in game number three. Yeah, the, the character won't always throw you off guard if you're so used to those situations fundamentally. And that's what he felt out as the veteran, like you referenced. Mm -hmm. He's really showing out. And I think this game four is going to need to bring in a lot of adaptation from now the side of base mage. Because what was a really comfy 2-0 lead can become a now a 2-2 grudge match, right? As we have a potential game five in the works. Taking away all those platforms, we are going to final destination. Which I think is a good, I, I mean, base mage gets a lot off of tech chases on the platforms, but when your gameplay in this matchup specifically is so edge guard focused, I agree. Take away any opportunities to like sneak away to a platform off the edge. Right, and I, I mean like Riddles was living to some later percents this last game and showed that he can really cook when it comes to Buster Wolf at ledge. So if you're base mage, you want to just avoid those percentages as much as possible. 
But before finding those percentages, you want to land and get cooking yourself. Yeah, you, you do need to get some hits in here. Power Dunk's just barely off the mark. Good DI from Basic. And trying to set up that situation we're talking about. But sneaking away. And what a fade on the Power Dunk that time. He thought it might cross up to the right. But Riddle's just using his movement so well. In the grand scheme of things, he's slight, getting slightly punished for it still. But it shows that he has those mix-ups in his pocket. Yeah, it's so interesting. I don't even know you could do that. You, you see it in perfect example here when he's trying to sneak to the ledge, but patience pays off for base mage. Who knows? I will eventually find this back here. Yeah, and find it he did. Riddles has some catching up to do here on the second stock of his. If you're base mage, you're loving this extra credit. You're going to farm this till the end of time. Mm -hmm. Anything that will knock you off the stage faster, but oh, the roll scouted. He had the roller jump, right? Because that shield, shield was, low, was yeah. mega low. And I mean, if your shield gets popped as puff, it's the same situation anyway. Yeah, it does not matter what percent you are. You are, are immediately dead. Like a balloon. The shield getting a little low on the other side of Riddles, though, but he's still able to knock the puff away to the other side of the stage. Ooh, whips an important back air when trying to land, but Riddles not capitalizing too much off of it. Uppy almost enough to KO. Good DI from base mage on the lights character in the game helping him stay alive. These Uppy callouts, man. He's getting so much mileage off of them. Yeah, and that was from the ground. We, we saw the previous combo attempt was, was, was a rising combo. Right, and it still almost killed. Second time was definitely enough here. Oh, and going for it again. Oh All my right. gosh. You are dead. That catch is landing so well, but it's How's one the of those things can he Does that? Mm, I, I wonder if Rills could have gone for a harder punish there. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe he expected the timer to be a lot shorter and just wanted to get off that Halo platform and get damage before he couldn't. Let's we'll see if that costs him his winner's bracket life. Ooh, okay. Everyone's yeah. living. Yeah, notice how base mage equalized this so quickly. Nice tech Great again. Tech. Gold that meter tech here. could have been everything. The tech might have walked so Riddles could run. And it's just going to frame trap and take this to a game five. What a sneaky up B from that, Riddles that to help sneaky. stay alive. And like base mage had to go vertical with his defensive options. So. Was, that might have been SDI up into immediate air dodge from, from base mage. That was then just caught immediately. Yeah, and I think even if like if he drifted, he had to. He would have had to drift really far left to still not be in like suction range from that move. Yeah, because the arms will will suction you up into the strong hitback pretty much as long as you're anywhere near Terry. Right? right, right. Yeah, it was definitely like a toilet bowl, just waiting to catch some victims. But yeah, we got a game five. It is time. Sticking with Terry makes a ton of sense as we've seen Riddle's gameplay develop over this best of five set. Definitely. A slobber knocker of a set. Right. These two like to beat the snot out of each other with these characters. Yep, so they're gonna duke it out on the final destination pick one more time. The perfect, a fitting end to a thrilling best of five. Oh, yeah. This if I do say so myself. A great set between these two. And already opening up pretty evenly here in game number five. Glancing blows, 3% between each of them. Oh, oh wow. Missing the tech. We saw Rills was so good at those for the past couple of games, but Yeah, I swear he's been 9-0 and on those until now, and that could be pretty detrimental depending on how much base mage gets on this next stock. The base mage, the, the percent doesn't necessarily matter, right? We've seen so much burst potential, whether it's from rest or from Edgard sequences. Right. Like he's getting, as I say that. The double tap into side B cleans up the base mage stock. Yeah, Riddle's running back and forth, keeping the hands warm. I like how Base Mage shows he's willing to call out aerial option by just throwing blank moves into the air. It's like showing it's a no-fly zone sometimes. And it's keeping Riddle's very grounded. But if you're Terry, you're a pretty grounded character anyway. <laughs> but it's still just like the don't jump, because even though you haven't been that much, I'm yeah, calling you, you out. You want to win those air-to-airs. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, okay, power dunk off the mark again. Good DI from base mage. There's the tech you needed. Into the go! And that itself is its own no-fly zone. 
I cannot believe that base mage lived that. What amazing Dia. Yeah, I think that's the second eruption he's connected that hasn't, or a geyser that's connected that hasn't killed, but finds the kill anyway with an up air. And now if you're riddles, you're trailing ahead for the first time in this game. A wise man once said, if your dash attack KOs, you're carried. <laughs> and That's it's true. definitely the case as this just kills from, was that at zero? What an explosive end it, to game number five. It might as well could have been. What a just shocking last stock. It's not going to be the end for base mage. He still has his loser's bracket life. But that was such an explosive last stock and just last 45 seconds here from uh, Riddles. Incredible stuff. And you see, you don't need Kazuya Mishima to have an explosive character from the FGC. Terry gets it done versus Jigglypuff. I mean, the, the lightest character in the game, plus uh, a lot of rage on the part of Terry Bogard, means uh, you explode in an instant. Yeah, don't doubt this man's counter picks. I think he knows what he needs best. And when it's, when it's uh, Terry time for those recovery options you were talking about, let him cook. Let oh, him rock. Oh, he cooked all right. He cooked. He cooked for sure. What a great game five set. Reverse 3-0 for the number one overall seed of Frosty Fostings 15. Riddle's moving on to winner's finals. Yeah, base mage battling it out with the Sharks, who I believe is going to be Ned. Yeah, he falls down to either Ned or Leon, which both of those would be really fun sets. I'm excited. I'm not sure how the bracketology works out. Yeah, base. It will be going to Ned. Thank you, production. He's in the he's in the DLC gauntlet. A that's, simple, that's a simple every, puff main against the world. That's every ultimate bracket, though. True. Let's be real. <laughs> it is funny though the notion of a Jigglypuff fighting these like super villains in Kazuya, Mishima, and Sephiroth. <laughs> yeah, Kazuya, Bowser. Well, Bowser might be the one that makes the most sense. Right. Sephiroth. It is a very villainous bracket until oh, Terry yeah. comes out, you know. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah, uh, no. Up next. Shout out the base mage. Great showing, but Riddles lock things up. We'll find out who Riddles' opponent in winner's finals is going to be. It will be either Salt One or Apollo Kage. Snake versus Swords. I'm going to guess Starting Roy, but really any sword character could be potentially brought out. Right. We've seen the cloud. We've seen who Cloud Sever and Roy else. are the more common, common fix for, for Salt One, of course. Right. Those brawler-esque swordsmen. Mm -hmm. the, the quick ones they get in your face. And if you're fighting Snake, I mean, you want to be on his face at all times. Don't give him time to set up his military-grade weapons on you. But with that said, Apollo Kage, as I mentioned before, is the, the A button snake. He, he loves to scrap. He loves to fight with the A button. That, that was, he was known for that long before he was a, a top player, right? He was known to be the A button snake when he was just the number one player in St. Louis for four years running. And we're about to see here the brawler snake. Yeah, it goes in swinging, nade and an A button. Hello? Oh my okay. goodness. That, that is an A button. Bro, chill. Oh my goodness. That is the largest A button. That is the A button. The embodiment of the A button. But these grenades are a great backup plan to help Apollo Kage get back to the stage and avoid that cross, uh, or sorry, blade beam with the limit. Yeah, the toys are flying. The C4 was set. But the shield getting awfully low with the cross slash swinging on it. And he has the thing on him. Do you see it? <laughs> let him cook, Swag. <laughs> That's right. We need a let him cook counter at the top left of the <laughs> production. I, I love seeing the C4 get stuck, and then it's just like, when is he going to let that rip? Man, Alakage was thinking many, many frames in advance there. Right, he was like three steps ahead. And I mean, that's the beauty of snake combos in general. They look so calculated because there's so many moving pieces. But A wise man once said, if your dash attack kills. <laughs> yeah, dash attack do be killing when you're cloud. And it covers so much. It is the landing slayer, but also covers those ledges nicely. Oh, what a turnaround from Salt One here. Getting that great vertical combo. I know, they were taking a lot of trades when that first started, but the trades were clearly much more beneficial and for the, Salt One. So was that a wave bounce on the blade beam? I'm not sure, but he, he caught a little bit of air when he threw out that limit blade beam. Helped him avoid the C4 in that instance. Yeah, tries to do a little, little bit of a poke action with uh, down tilt, but gets ranged out by the sword. Apollo Kage, though, not caring whatsoever, getting the up air bread and butter to secure that stock. Snake's legs are swords. Let's be real. <laughs> that, that <laughs> up air. 
Honestly. A sword character wishes they had that, but okay, up smash is, is really strong with that sword too. Yeah, Salt One letting the up smash rip, equalizing the stocks once again. Right. Now the game's slowing down just a little bit more here. Yeah, they're just throwing projectiles back and forth. They're playing a platformer right now. Uh, one of you has to approach eventually, I suppose, but... Oh, okay, there's a scramble. Yeah, Salt One bit the bullet, found his way in. And let's see how much more he can turn this into. Yeah, Blade Beam seems to be his limit option of choice in this game. A really scary this spot here for AK, but he takes to the skies, the classic snake maneuver. I did not know that C4 was there. I'm not sure if Salt One did either, but that was... That was one of those moments that have you thinking life. Gonna try to catch this landing if you're Apollo or Salt One though. Salt One has played versus Snake many times. Hello? Wow. Who goes for that forward air there? What a wild option from AK, who turns it around when it looked like he was done and dusted. Instead, yeah, takes yeah. game one. Yeah, they have the same forward air if you think about it. It almost made me think that there was like a weird hitbox from the forward air of Cloud, but no, great stuff by Apollo Kage. What a reversal. You have to show people you're willing to find your way back to the stage while pressing buttons. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, they're just gonna come down there and hover next to you. It really just sends a message. I know that that's is, the joke, That is but... the position where, where Cloud should feel most advantaged in the match is when Snake has to go for that low recovery. We, we've seen a, a wide variety of Cloud sword options to stuff those low recoveries from AK in that game one, but instead, just immediate reversal. Let's see how Salt One responds in game number two. Yeah, those are just the toughest games to lose, but if you're Salt One and you've come from many matches of the same caliber, you're not sweating too much. You're going to go into this just as optimistic, on the same stage, planning to run it back. Yeah, see, look, at Dare just stuffing the Cypher right in AK's face. How did AK sneak through the cross slash? Yeah, that was interesting. And it, was the, it was the one time he didn't opt for Blade Beam. And down tilt up air is apparently going to confirm and connect. I, I don't think that was a confirm, but it was just a really good follow-up from AK. Yeah. It was like one of those max distance jump follow-ups that you don't expect someone to go for. Okay, but just going to okay, do it okay. twice, and it's going to work. Not fooled at all by that dash attack. That can be an ambiguous cross-up. But Salt One just stuffing with the up smash. Did you see those two empty hops from the side of Salt One? He just whiffed two grabs in a row from Apollo Kage. I love the confidence it takes not to press a button when it comes to multiple empty hops. And we see a defensive stick from AK just to stop any kind of advance from Salt One here. Yup. Yeah. yeah, and they take turns duking it out in the air. Gonna get the raw cross slash on the ground. Good patience with Salt One. Yeah, Salt One controlling the stage so nicely. And the movement from AK to not be forced to an ledge situation. Oh, oh my goodness! We don't see Clouds go for that high climb hazard with Limit anymore. That used to be like a staple right back when you wanted to swat a bayonet out of the sky. Right, it's one of those things that usually only works once unless you give it more time, but... Oh, where, now nowhere to go. There. Yeah. Nikita, its own character, is gonna just take that presence off stage and equalize the stocks once again. Snake don't even need to jump off the stage, Edgar. He just he just lets the projectile do the work for him. Yeah, he's like, go, doggy. And now, okay, how Find does Cloud get out of this sword. ledge spot? It's tough. He's really not letting him breathe at the ledge. But now he's off stage. And another just duck and weave to get into that cross slash and shield it. Oh, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Like I said, Snake's feet are swords <laughs> as they snipe the recovery and the 2-0 lead goes Apollo Kage's way. Yeah, they snipe the lead, they go under. He set up everything at the ledge, right? He had the up smash waiting to fall down and catch the two frame as well as the down to, or the down smash. But we've seen the higher seed go down 2-0 already in winner's semis. Right, <laughs> and look what happened there. Hey, don't curse this. Anything could happen. This set had no bad juju in it until <laughs> that was thrown in there. <laughs> Roy comes out to the Roy. Play. Yep. 
Let's see what uh, Salt One's plotting back there. And going to the smallest stage in the format, Smashville, makes a ton of sense when you're playing Roy. You, you just want to get in and slug, right? Yeah, I don't think he wants to risk these off-stage interactions anymore. He'd rather, like, while Roy's isn't that much better, he can snap it much quicker. But AK on his punish game right now, and even turning around the down smash to go exactly for the back hit. The lock, yeah, and then he leaps off stage trying to get the spike that ended game one, but it's not gonna hit, and we have a pretty volatile first stock here. Oh, and good coverage with the mortar cannon. And that's actually, believe me, that, that's the first up tilt we've seen. Yeah. Snake up tilt. We, we hadn't we hadn't seen a single one go for a KO. Instead, these up airs have been doing so much work for Apollo Kage, he takes another stock lead. That's that one of those misconceptions where Snake up tilt is so good, people accuse Snake of like using that all the time, but Apollo Kage is showing that it has its moments, and he'll show us when. Yeah, he doesn't need to like rely on it. it it's a very good move, don't get me wrong. Okay, sliding Ooh. forward tilt, also a great first yeah. option for Salt One. That's been a staple for Roy since week one. And it still remains a staple. Strong for, for many, many reasons. Yeah, gonna find his way in with the forward air. The nair, one more forward air. This should be a dead stage. Oh, that's Oh, no. I thought he was snapping ledge there. Roy, man. Roy looks so good until he's off the stage in that exact situation. <laughs> Every time. Now these you you feel you take these grenade trades every single day. Wow, what great DI to stay alive. Like trading trading with Snake already feels awful, but trading with Snake when he's a stock ahead feels the worst. But Salt One showing that he doesn't care. He's gonna take that stock and Oh, and he's oh gonna, oh, my good. god. On the freeze frame he DI'd in. Yeah, gonna try to, to catch him with the up smash. Gets the grab. Grenade gonna disrupt. And Salt One getting an unfortunate hit on that back here. It's gonna struggle to get back in. Oh, the clock is ticking on Salt One here. That counter could have been everything. Ooh, finds his way in with the forward air though. And the up tilt we spoke so highly of. It's gonna do it. And Midwest making it to winner's finals. Apollo Kage trying to show himself one of the best players in the world, of course. Takes out the two seed Salt One in a 3-0 emphatic victory. Big 3-0. We're gonna have a fighting game character and a snake in Winner's Finals. It's That's gonna be sweet. a treat. That's gonna be a great set. I cannot wait for Winner's Finals, guys. This has been such a treat to commentate for you all today. Yeah, it's been a blast. So loser's bracket now, it's gonna be looking like Base Mage versus, what Ned. is it, Ned? Yeah, okay. Then Salt One versus Leon. Leon, yeah. Again, they're just gonna slug it out, man. This is such an aggro top eight. The villains. The, the villains all get sent down. It's a very leaves. rugged top eight, if you will. Mm hmm. Rugged with a puff. But yeah, no, <laughs> great stuff to Apollo Kage. I mean, he's no stranger to runs like this. And especially at Midwest tournaments, it seems he gets that. He gets that. The hometown juice. buff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still a lot more work to do. But guys, before we get into uh, the losers' quarterfinals matches, we're gonna be going to a short ad break. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back with more Smash Ultimate at Frosty Fossils.
Since 2008, Gaming Gen has been providing staffing, consoles, monitors, and every other essential for amazing events. Rushdown Revolt, a fast-paced fighting game that brings anime fighter mechanics to the platform fighter genre. Battle to the Beat in this intense rhythm fighting game hybrid. Featuring a unique cast of characters and electrifying gameplay, God of Rock is like nothing you've witnessed before. DNF Duel, coming to the Nintendo Switch April 20th. Now you can hit the lab on the go. Guilty Gear Strive Season 2. With four new characters including Bridget, Sin, and two more characters to be announced for release later this year. Them's Fightin' Herds Season Pass 1 available now. Including Texas the Bull and three more upcoming characters along with new stages. Celebrating over 10 years of Skullgirls and 5 years of Skullgirls Mobile. With four brand new DLC characters, grab the Season Pass on Steam and you'll unlock access to Black Dahlia's Alpha now. MSI Cyborg 15. For only $9.99, you can grab a monster rig pumping out 1080p at 144Hz via a 4050 GPU. Junk Food. Proven quality, added compatibility, and ultimate portability. Featuring support for PS5 and Xbox Series, you can also pick up the brand new micro... Welcome back, folks, to Frosty Fostings 15. My name is Lord Sturm. Joining me... And I am Thwack. What is up, folks? We are getting into losers quarterfinals here of Smash Ultimate Top 8 at Frosty Fostings. Up first is going to be uh, Base Mage versus Ned. That's yeah. going to be our first match. Let's take a look at that bracket action. so we can see just what we witnessed here in the first four matches, guys. Yeah, we got uh, Riddles and Apollo Kage sitting in winners finals. Uh, shout out to Apollo Kage with that nice 3-0 over Salt One we saw earlier. We have Salt One and Leon sitting in the losers, and Base Mage and Ned, who we will see right now. The Jigglypuff and the Severoth, battle of the the featherweights. The featherweights for sure. This is a uh, <laughs> glass cannon of a matchup if there ever really was one. Sephiroth, super light. Uh, maybe. This, uh, this might be one of the characters that can actually edge guard Sephiroth, believe it or not. I, I, I want to see how Base Mage approaches the offstage game, because not many characters can deal with that Octa Slash that we saw was so effective for Psycho. Right. And sometimes you can get like those drifty strings on Sephiroth before he can even... Or you can catch jumps or get those drifty strings on him to a point where Octa Slash can't even save him, you know? Yeah, just send him at that terrible, terrible angle where, like, nothing would save him. Right. When you're that big and that light, you're a liability. But like we said, we bo they both have the delete buttons. Yeah, and <laughs> we've seen Sephiroth pop a shield once in this top eight already. And I would, I, it's one of my favorite things in the game, watching Jigglypuff explode when her shield pops. Right. So to, satisfying. To the heavens. <laughs> yeah, that's... But so, uh, sorry, Base Mage is uh, very aware of that and probably will play around that, so... Right. I'd imagine they stay in the air just as much as a pub normally would, but with a lot of tricky drift and avoiding of the aerials and smash attacks that Ned has. Yeah, and the aerial smash attacks. Look at that up air. Look how much yeah. space that occupies. If you're an aerial character, how do you play around that move? Yeah, yeah <laughs> no character has the no-fly zones quite like Sephiroth. Oh my goodness! Well, I was proven right in the first 20 seconds of you this match. You literally came in <laughs> saying, I want to see how he's going to approach Octo Slash. And just punch it in the face was yeah. the answer. <laughs> Let's see if he keeps punching it in the face or if Ned gets a little trickier. Yeah, this, this is not a matchup that we are terribly, and I mean, very few regions are experienced in the Puff matchup at this level, right? Basically, best Puff player in the world. So how Ned will adapt is going to be and on the recovery end is probably the most crucial point. Right. And it's it's been looking tough, but the second stock has been a strong showing for Ned. Yeah, but Base Mate doesn't have to rush it either. Right. Find that one opportunity. There's zero reason to rush it. <laughs> but like we were talking about shields popping, you better be careful with those side beast flies. The reverse hit of that up here, almost enough to kill the light Jigglypuff, but staying alive, good DI. Yeah, it's very hard to juggle or landing shark uh, Jigglypuff when you have that many jumps and have that many options to kind of find your way to a stage. Again, just the, the perfect DI to the very corners of Pokemon Stadium's top hitboxes. Yeah, I like the usage of that medium Giga Flare to kind of cover the air even more when it comes to what's off stage. But the low, low up air is going to take this stock. And now 
only getting 30% on that second stock. Now a little bit more. Uh, Ned's not bleeding out as much as he could have been after he lost that first stock so early. Oh yeah, comes swinging out of the angel platform was base mage, but now Ned is back in this neutral position that we see base mage has to play very careful in order to find a way to poke and prod through Ned's defenses. Yeah, and it's already just about equal in terms of percent. But in this like this neutral game positioning, it's so hard to deal with for Jigglypuff. Right, and Jigglypuff like less, much less plays the percentage game. Right, she's gonna yeah. kill you with a really bursty option, or she's gonna kill you off stage before you really get to a higher percentage anyway. Uh, the one-winged angel showing itself for the first time in this game number one. That can help for really high chases. Right, he said I could fly too. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's a Sephiroth. But... You missed that tech. This is a scary spot. Yeah, Jigglypuffs are primed and ready for techs like those because they're so used to that knockdown situation. But the forward tilt spaced at the ledge is going to take this stock for Ned, and now he's ahead. And now who can turn around and play it slow? It's Ned this time. Good sneaky shield somehow. Oh, and then wow. that angle must have been a misinfo. He might have fast fell way lower than he intended to, but... Base Mage will take those. Yeah. They absolutely are worth exactly the same as taking a stock the legitimate way. Yeah, the extra jumps weren't showcased much, but there oh, is one of those drifty strings we were talking about. All the way to the right side of the stage, and Base Mage is going to go up one game against Ned in this best of five. The burst edge guard from base mage so clutch after he was again again he was staring down the barrel of being in that terrible neutral position with Ned having a lead, then Ned misses the recovery input and just immediately reversed around into an edge guard. Great stuff for base mage. Right, but it's not a blunder that makes you think there's anything wrong with this matchup and they're literally gonna go right back with the same characters. Oh yeah, I, I you see the strengths each character brings to the table here, right? Right. And, and Ned loves to play games slow and steady. That's just been his MO for as long as he's been playing Smash, right? So he will take this neutral advantage and then deal with the risky recoveries every time. Right. That's the adjust accordingly method. But slowly and methodically. And that's only game one. There's still plenty of Smash left to be played between these two. Totally. And yeah, they might just play this whole set on Stadium, believe it or not. Yeah, they're going to take turns just slugging on each other on these first stocks. Lots of trades we've seen, lots of fight for this center stage. Now it's the left side of the stage, but Ned is not where he'd want to be against Jigglypuff. Trades all the way at the left side. And that's a trade that is perfect for base mage because I'm able to make it back. You are out of jumps, out of resources, out of time. Base mage makes Jigglypuff look like the best character when they're off stage. Oh, yeah, and, and it's awesome to watch how base mage just, like, dissects opponents' recoveries. We were saying, <laughs> Sephiroth has a great recovery. How are you going to deal with Octocide? You just right. don't get in game one, and then just don't even give him, like, the range or the resources of your double jumps to deal with it in game two. And he quite actually has a third jump to even work with sometimes, too, and that's what's so, yeah, like, darring about it. Yeah, the one it. wing showed up while he was off stage. Yeah. And now playing it slow again. Again, only need one, really one opening just to get Sephiroth off stage here, but swatted out of the skies with an up air. Yeah, Base Mage plays much more footsies when they have that lead because you can tell they're trying to just milk a little bit more. And it seemed like Ned kind of adapted to that and found the stock much quicker than he normally would have when Base Mage is playing that way with a lead. I'm curious what notes Base Mage might be taking about some of like, these tech chase situations. There's been a couple of them on these platforms on Stadium. And base mage has not really pulled the trigger on anything super risky. Right. But I'm wondering what he's thinking. Like, we're seeing some rolls back. Dude, getting hit by the multi hits of Octa Slash when someone's recovering feels like something that it's the so user sad. never intends. <laughs> but it's one of those things where it's like, oh, okay. It's so sad feeling. It's like, I've got, <laughs> I've got this ledge trap all lined up, and then just, oh, here's like two little pokey <laughs> strings ruining my day. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, if I'm base mage, I'm punching the air right now in my head. Actually, there's no time to punch the air. You got a set to win, buddy. And I go for the second one is the shield poke. That's another one that always feels bad. Yeah. 
Ooh, Ned though showing, all right, I'm gonna throw this forward air out in case you do approach me horizontally. And now Ned's gonna take the lead after carrying to the left side of the stage and securing the stock. Second one is gonna clean things up here as these forward airs go. The strong back air from Jigglypuff, not enough to kill Sephiroth. And now who's getting the tech chases? It's Ned this time, adding on that damage. If this rage stays, we could see like a back air kill at like 60. Oh, literally. Maybe even earlier, depending on how close you are to the ledge. But yeah, he's a, he's one hit away from just getting deleted. But and still holding hangs on. in there. Ooh, that was a really good feint. And an even better back air to secure that stock. That's gonna help Ace Mate stay alive. Oh, did that poke or was that a shield drop there? Oh, oh no! It doesn't matter, because all you need is to drop the shield one time and get carried away. Face Mage clutching again. He said down B. Took a nap. Came in with the burstiest of burst options. We were talking about like good burst options from Jigglypuff earlier, but that is the burst option when the stars align. Now Ned on the back foot again, shaking his head as we go, I believe it is again, Stadium. The tempo of this game, of these games, they've been, I think, in Ned's favor. Like, he's finding himself in those good neutral positions, but he's just not, like, clutching stocks early, really. Right. So he's still relying on just the poke and prod of Sephiroth, like a back air or up air, forward air. These things that are killing Jigglypuff at, like, 110, 120. And Base Mage just has this clutch factor, finding stocks super early. Yeah, I feel like these sets, more than any of the ones we've seen thus far, have had, like, larger or more drastic tempo shifts the most, you know? Mm -hmm. They'll take turns, and it's usually, it'll be net in control until Base Mage gets his 10 seconds of just Jigglypuff stuff, you know? Right. And I, I think, in, I'm sure if you went and looked at like most Jiggly, like first Jigglypuff matchup, Jigglypuff is going to be doing less damage, but just getting the kills earlier. That's definitely been the case here in this game. Totally. Octoflash is going to do a number on the base mage shield, but that's okay. Has a little bit of time to let that regen. The one wing was so clutch for Ned in this game so far. He was, had lost his double jump, and then the third jump is like, I got you, Bo. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Don't Make worry. Your yeah, and that adds so much to his presence offstage. He gets chances to use those jumps. See, mixes a back air with that extra jump. Holding the ground super well, not even jumping. And then I say that and he jumps. The anti-air dash attack. Exactly, <laughs> that's what was such good, a good thing about that call out, right? There were like no jumps to be seen and then just as soon as the jump happened, base mage dash attacked it away. Yeah, and that's actually a much better tool for catching landings than I realized. The, the dash attack, rather. Yeah, the low profiling of it can go under a couple of aerials if you're not expecting it, right? So that, that was what Base Mage had in mind, I want to say. The tackle, the 30 power tackle. And yeah, now we got a Puff living at 130%. This is this is the issue here with Ned. I, I don't want to say it's the issue with like Ned's strategy, because obviously he's had a ton of success as an ultimate player, but it's hard to have to do 140 plus percent to a Puff every single stock when those burst options come out of nowhere. Yeah. And you're not... Those options that can kill Puffed really early just aren't panning out for Ned right now. But those are the types of moves that can really be game changers right now. But finding them is tough because Base Mage's movement is so decisive. And yeah, it's elusive, right? Elusive, that's the, the, the way The way he's just sharking, not necessarily committing to a platform, but maybe looking like he could. Totally. Okay, get in the grab for your troubles here, and there's a dash attack to swing back the stage. Yeah, doesn't quite convert it into an up air, but salvages a dash attack out of it. Turns around and gets a uh, forward tilt two while he's at it. But a back air to snipe the stage back again for base mage. Oh, and I love that, just start the jump, air dodge right back, maybe see if you can get Ned to commit to a move, and then find an approach on the ground. Totally. Wow, I'm surprised it didn't scoop him up. I feel like Sephiroth's up tilt is very generous about its scoop. It might just be the low profiling again. That, that has been a tricky thing for Kazuya, as we saw in the yeah. winner's set. Yeah, I'd imagine shorter characters in general are a tough matchup for this character. What a dip down low again for base mage. Just knowing Ned wants to commit to those low uh, Octa slashes to recover. 
But there's the swing back. This is a last stock situation. Yeah, we got a game. Tournament stock on the line. Or tournament life on the line, rather. Ned's going to have to go up and go big. But here comes base mate. Yeah, okay, double jump away from that platform. You do not want to be tech chased for your tournament life. Yeah, he's going to dash back and forth. Command the ground quite nicely. They're both... They're both taking it so slowly. They're waiting for the perfect opportunity because they know the wrong swing can really result in a well, game loss here. Mm -hmm. But the pressure's on Ned for sure. Yeah, good grab. He's always looking to just forward throw and get him off the stage with these grabs. And as Puff, why wouldn't you? Yeah, you, you, don't, you don't need like a, a one to confirm out of a grab, really. You just need to get them off the stage. And oh, okay. that could have been everything. Another very low recovery from Ned, but he picks a different angle this time. Oh, and the oh, triple no jump up air! He's been saving that one. And if you're Puff, there's no way you're expecting that either. They get up air in the blast zone. Yeah, Puff, you, you are very used to being very safe in the top magnifying glass, but off the jumping off the platform using all three jumps, Sephiroth got up there and got that Puff out of here. He was beyond dead. Died twice even. <laughs> You have to jump off the stage in the next game, right? Yeah, it's right. Such a good read. But that keeps Ned's bracket alive for at least one more game. Yeah, if you're a base mage, you're going all in on this. You don't want to get reverse swept twice. That's a that would be brutal. That's terrifying. Especially the way that, that Terry Bogard just stole that last stock in game number oh, five. Oh, I know, dude. But here we are on Kalos Pokemon League Game 4. Yeah, we finally switched it up from Pokemon Stadium. First time we're seeing the stage in Top 8 here today. This is a stage where you, you sometimes you think that those platforms will help you like mix up your ledge get up options, but that's exactly what your opponent wants you to do, right? They look like it's a safety valve, but instead it's a trap. Right. I want to see how Base Mage tries to trap Ned on these side platforms here. And it's one of those things where you very much account for like sticking the stage with Sephiroth and stuff like that, but it's another option that's pretty easy to snuff out if you're oh. Jigglypuff. buff. But it's not easy to survive these up airs when they're so well positioned. No way, bro. And there's oh no, no platform to escape to in the middle of Kalos Pokemon League, which I think might be advantage Ned, like a Final Destination style of layout. Yeah. But we'll have to see how it plays out in real time. Now, now Ned can play this poke and prod game that he loves so much. You're going to shield every hit of that. Going to go for the hard call out on the sleep. All right. Yeah, that was beautiful from Base Mage. That looked really goofy, but I'm sure all of us in chat got hit by that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the psychic damage once again. Again, it, it looks so simple. Oh, just sing at the ledge. It'll work every time. But that was, that was just well well committed by base. It's like if you've conditioned them not to get up attack or do an aggressive option back on stage enough, it almost can appear as very, very tactical. Now Ned has all this space to work with on Kalos. Throwing the Giga Flare again. Sneaks by, good recovery. God, I stop breathing for a second every time he gets one of those, like the first forward air off stage and keeps drifting. Yeah, we were. everyone was wondering when Ned was gonna throw out that up air when he positioned himself so highly on Kalos. Yeah. And he's been getting even more uh, up airs since then. They're just but taking turns. Yeah, Ned needs this final blow and there you go. Get your roll for your trouble. Back air will, I would have killed many, many characters, but Puff is so light, even with the far blast zones on Kalos, no yes. chance. Space well, wall of pain. You can space them so far as Sephiroth too. Ned just creating a huge stronghold of back airs. Yeah, and now we, we need to see that comeback factor from base mage that he's so well known for. Jump save the entire time from Ned though, helping him stay alive. Gosh, trading with Octoslash is so scary on that first one because it puts you in that situation where you have to do it again. Yeah, I'm sure it, with Ned, it gets to a point where you're like, I have to do this one angle no matter what. Mm -hmm. And you just hope for the best. But the bleeding continues here for base mate on this stock. Okay, going for the snipe. Not going to find the mark, though. This back air also not going to quite KO. I thought that would be a little bit stronger, but alas. Yep. 
You have your base mage, you're hanging on by some of these lucky off hits and smart positioning. Ooh, tries to get the up tilt. Goofy looking footstool, but okay, there's the back air, and that was finally at the very corner of the ledge. And it pains me to say, but they are both at kill percent with how some of these Jigglypuff percents went. That is true. Ned needs to play very cautious here. Yeah, Ned like a shark. All these empty hops on the ground, keeping it very elusive as to when he's going to up air, but the back air is going to do it from the right side of the stage. I thought for a minute Base Mage had the DI. Like, you, you, you saw Puff linger yeah. in the magnifying glass over there. I thought he might have that two count, but instead it is game at number five again for Base Mage, who has to hold on, or now he's an elimination prospect. I, I was very much a believer. I, I didn't even, like, I didn't even lean forward yet because I'm like, oh, he lived. Yeah, and I, then I, it did have that hiccup. It was callous, right? You, you yeah. want him. The, the far blast zones are, like it's like a, a Dreamland in Melee, right? Yeah. Why, why Pup loves that stage so much in Melee? Because the, the blast zones are so far away, and you kill regardless of where the blast zones are with things like rest and edge guards that you don't care so much. So that, that's supposed to be your advantage. But instead, Ned takes the W on base mage's counter pick, and we are going to a decisive game five once more. The ceiling goes to the moon. Yeah, that's a good call out on the stages. I didn't see their selection, but I'd imagine there's no way they go back. It's going to be Battlefield here. Still big, but not as big in those beneficial areas. And yeah, having no platform coverage really, just, I think, made it hard for Base Mage to get neutral started oh, totally. in a way that he enjoyed. Oh, and a couple Phantom Footstools. And these glancing blows either way. Neither player going for too much of an overcommitment yet. Yeah, I feel like being anywhere above those platforms is very terrifying if you're Jigglypuff and your opponent isn't up there with you. It's very hard to land successfully. Right, but you can use that aerial drift, like starting from a platform potentially to, to get neutral going. Totally, and you can make it to the other platform before they can even arrive. Yep, yeah, both of them fighting for this center under these two platforms. Yeah, Ned using Nair to just kind of box away in the air-to-air -air battle. Yeah, we haven't had an offstage scramble yet. There, there was almost one. Like, if, if Jigglypuff had landed a down air in like, exactly this position on the right side, it would have been a scramble. But yeah. Ned is staying on terra firma, and that's important for his prospects of moving on in bracket. Yeah. When we say that, the scramble happens, and now it seems like they've both had a scramble off stage. It's just a race for this first stock. It seems like both of them have carried their first stock momentum so well throughout the set. Another roll caught by the back air, but it was a sour hit. That's going to keep Jigglypuff alive. Yeah, forward air going to put Ned off stage. He's going to find his way back with the Octo Slash, and he's going to aggressively find his way back on stage. I'm, that forward air, okay, yeah, that forward air would have killed anywhere from a, except from just all the way across Battlefield. You see the second one does just that. Ned taking a very important stock lead in game five. Oh, oh! my goodness! And he gets... The forward air is on the right side of the stage once again, what? carrying them with that drift of Jigglypuff. What a brilliant turnaround from Base Mage, who was so far behind. If he had to play that neutral versus neutral game, it was going to take many, many hits to make this comeback happen. But the burst is key. Yeah, the burst is always primed and ready, too. It's like if he gets past that one air dodge window he always has to deal with, he's going to get that stock. And Base Mage took away a very important one wing from Ned as well. It spawned in the middle of that scramble, and it might have been enough to help him just stay alive for like so much longer. Yeah, that's one of those that's one of those thresholds you're trying to avoid for dear life. It's like mm -hmm. the Terry Bogart go meter from his previous set. Yeah, except it's just then you have to play like a much harder neutral game. But Ned playing a great neutral as we've been talking about how important that comeback was for Base Mage. Ooh, great grab though. Woo! Oh my goodness, they're both going for these end it all type situations. Yeah, scary forward smash. The trade. Base Mage makes it back to stage first. Yeah, now Ned can play so slow with the one wing. Yeah. Yeah, those, those wing back airs have been very much a detriment to Base Mage. Oh, and that's a good trade for Ned here. And oh, that second trade, somehow Base Mage stays alive through that up air trade? Yeah, Crazy. It, didn't, it didn't look like the strongest hit of up air, right? I didn't know that had a weak hit. I thought it was just big sword. 
uh, big, big sword big swing. Big sword do things. Now you're making me question it. <laughs> yeah, one, yeah one. he really wants it, though. Oh, straight to the ledge, not messing around, and he's going to take this. The keep away game Tournament working for now. stock Nemo. for base mage. The wing has disappeared, but still the damage has been done. <laughs> yeah, landing safely doesn't okay, connect that okay. side B, and now we have a tournament stock for both combatants. Yeah. Definitely feel like Base Mage might be able to ride that momentum, right? Because he, he, again, was so far behind. But this is the clutch factor of Jigglypuff. Let's see. Yeah, I like how Ned's using this grounded dash speed to his advantage with Sephiroth. It's making it so much harder for Base Mage to get in because he sprints back, does an aerial, sprints back again. And it's making Base Mage have to roll in with a lot of these approaches. Ooh, oh my really goodness. Really scary. But this could be the one. If they had gone to the top of the platform, that would have been the tech chase for the game. But instead, Ned DI'd, I think, just specifically to not be on the platform. So he DI'd left to go to the ledge. That could be the difference between life and death here. Oh, that back air would have certainly that killed. That would have been it. That was one of those back airs he placed in these last few matches for the game, too. Base Mage learning his lesson, though. Ned's creating as much space as he can with forward tilt. And, and this he... back air should get it done. No! No, he doesn't. Too Can't lock it up. Alluding to the fully charged Giga Flare. Cancels it. Now Base Mage in control as he controls stage. Teching. The tech's going to be huge! And staying alive is Ned. Wow. Back and forth we go. Tries to call out with an up smash so hard, too. Space from the ledge, but doesn't. That was at least four back airs in the span of a second. Both players want this so badly. And Base Mage will get there. No, but another two oh. And then there on the linger. What a clutch statement from Base Mage, who avoids the reverse 3-0 fate and oh. takes out Ned in a nail biter. That was just, he made the flow chart in that very last exchange. He got him even further to the right side after that second forward air. And he said, all right, you're going to have to take this angle no matter what. Fell to that bottom right side of the blast zone and hit the forward air for the game. And Base Mage showing a great reverse adaptation to his reverse adaptation to close out that loser's bracket set. There were DI two counts both ways on the final stock. Man, that that. I'm out of breath, and we're just sitting here talking about it. <laughs> that was crazy. That was wild. We called game at least three times. Yeah, and it, there was still game left to be played. All right. And that's, man, Base Mage was so clutch there to take out another Midwest threat and stay alive in the loser side of bracket. I got a few grays from that set for <laughs> sure. Like it, it has to be that way. You were squeezing my arm again. <laughs> I was squeezing my arm again. Shout out to we Base Mage. We were all spooked. Yeah. Pretty, pretty spooked here on the desk. Ned with quite the run, though. Yeah, very impressive fifth place. He was this close. Again, game of inches for moving on into Loser's Semifinals. But we will find out just coming up next who Base Mage will fight in Loser's Semis. Is it going to be Leon or uh, Salt One? Salt One. Salt One and Leon, yes. I was making sure. Two recoveries that Base Mage absolutely can take advantage of. Yeah. But these are, these are some sluggers. heavy hitters too, yeah. They will kill Puff super early, but one, only one of them is going to get there, so. Yeah, and I'm wondering how these two particularly are going to kill each other with when they both have so many explosive options. Not too familiar with the matchup itself, but Bowser has way more options to exploit bad recoveries than people give him credit for. Oh, yeah. Um, if you are getting ledge trapped by Bowser, you can die in like a million different ways. I, I think it's just going to be another slug fight. We, we're just going to see buttons on buttons, man. The only projectile is technically Flame Breath. Right. So they're they're just going to go. And look how look how explosive this has been already. No pun intended. Lots of battering and bruising. Both of them in the red zone already. Oh, and there's a snipe on a recovery with the eruption. Salt one takes first blood in game one on stadium. Yeah, that move covers the ledge against big characters a lot more than people might think. Yeah, gonna jab, find his way in with the Nair. When you're Roy against Bowser, everything's at the base of the blade because he's such a big character. But you can still juggle him so much that it doesn't necessarily matter. Right. Oh my goodness. 
pretty good trade here for Leon. Yeah, just letting the Hail Mary up smash rip to close out that first stock of Salt Ones. Oh, and almost able to get things started there with that forward air, but instead, Whirling Fortress gonna help create a little bit of space and then trading another up B right back here for Salt Ones. Yeah, and just gonna convert so much percentage off of that grab. Gonna get the command grab on the platform too. Like we were talking about earlier, he has to be so careful on those platforms too when he's in shield. Oh, and that, oh, that could have been a turnaround here for Leon, but instead, Salt One gets a nice pair. I think a parry just up tilt? What, what, what yeah. was that? I think it was up tilt. Okay. Yeah, now he's just gonna try to find his way back to stage the best he can against the fire. Knocking this Bowser as far away as he can, 173%, but there's an up tilt from Leon just from the ledge. Yeah, Bowser's up tilt does it all, man. Ooh! Forward air does a whole lot, too. Yeah, and he's going to go way deep to the depths of Pokemon Stadium to get that one. And it's going to pay off. One down throw at an early stock for Roy can get uh, Salt 1 a lot of percentage. And we're trying to start the Flame Breath on the platform, but Sneaky Salt 1 gets under it and then is able to get a ton of damage for his trouble. Oh, no! Why did he turn around? I don't know. Did he reverse it? That looks so goofy. Yeah, that was interesting. That was one of the weirdest interactions I've seen all day. And that's going to do it, though. A Roy's favorite move, the double edge to dance. Yeah, we, we went from a weird interaction to a pretty bog standard one. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to dash forward. Down tilt, tech chase into the double edge dance to explode. Even Bowser, the heaviest character in the game. So much fire in this matchup. Not oh, yeah. very frosty fostings of them. They're trying to keep the venue warm. Yeah, right. We're going to have to change the logo from a snowflake to a, a flame. It's the Bowser and Roy HVAC company. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> They'll fix your heat. They'll do it all. Town and city we go. Game number two. You know, Roy has a ton of ground speed, but Bowser does too. Yeah. He's he, he can do some scooting and booting here on town using this base platform to his advantage. Oh, there's an... They I'll made Bowser a speedster in this game. I feel like you're never safe when landing because he'll always find his way to where you're going. Huge oh. jab to forward smash. That combo was assisted by just the, the big booty that Bowser has. Really easy hurt box to combo. Right, and there's that down throw to just so much I was talking about earlier. What, I, I swear, when you get that down throw on these bigger characters too, it's like such a thrill you get. You're going into creative mode because there's so many yeah. things you can try to connect and string with. Against these characters, everyone's combo game off a of down throw turns into Steve combo game. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but Leon's not out of it. Now he's got this big base platform to work with, but just fading double-edge dance from landing. Yeah, goes for the eruption at ledge again. Doesn't get the two frame he got earlier. Yeah, that up tilt really is getting kind of projected a little bit. That's Leon's win condition here. But okay, Ford would also work. But in the meantime, Salt One, he's just happy to take pummels. Extra credits, extra credits. Yeah, he's throwing a lot of forwarders this way. Doesn't go for the double edge dance, do anything risky that could get the situation re reversed. Which is good on Salt One's behalf. Yeah, patience. Another is, grab. Patience is the name of the game. Bowser has to press a button to kill you, and there you go. Catch a yep. down air at a disadvantage. Three stocks to one. Yeah, the gro grounded blazer always proving to be an excellent option from the side of Roy. And yeah, like you said, it's just going to be extra credit now. 44 is already quite a bit. <laughs> but the down air is even more than quite a bit. That's everything. That's the exclamation point on this three stock for Salt One, who's planning like he might be a little bit mad that he's in losers already, All right. <laughs> to be frank. Just exploding the Koopa. Every which way, kill him off the side, off the top, off the bottom of the stage, doesn't matter. Roy's down air looks so satisfying. He puts his heart and soul into that volleyball spike down air. Oh yeah. It's like the closest thing to a Dragon Ball Z spike, but with a sword. The thing that's crazy about Roy's dare is it's so powerful when it spikes, like one of the strongest spikes in the game. Yeah. And then when it doesn't spike, you can still combo off of it off the ledge. Yeah, yeah. Four kills. Yeah, it's a lot more finicky with those hitboxes than people think. 
Yeah, shout outs to uh, Revolver in the Chicago scene who does a lot of that, the dare to try and two frame. And if it yeah. spikes, great. If it doesn't spike, I can still kill you with a fair. Yeah, he's a big duel. Oh my god. He uh, did the town and city thing. He had his way on that platform. You know, yeah. M many people would say don't take Roy to town for the, the Roy town factor, but Bowser has a town factor too. So I don't blame Leon for it necessarily, but I mean, Salt One's proving it. Yeah, it's like one grab on those platforms is all it takes. But Leon not finding the grabs he needs to to, very, to exploit that very much. All right. But he will exploit that forward smash and take his first stock of this game. Give him the boots. Yeah. Now, how does Leon get his combo started? He tried going with a neutral air, like right into Salt One's face. That's the oh, that could have been everything. <laughs> he accidentally canceled it himself, and that could have been a stock. A really early one at that. But everyone's living as it stands here. Yeah, he's just gonna jump, run back to stage, not mess with any of that business, and now they're scrapping on the left side again. That's kind of scary. Like you saw uh, Leon go for the tech back. Yeah. As, as he gets the nair to back air, that's a Bowser staple to take a stock lead here. I, I wonder if Salt One's really thinking about what he wants to do in like the tech chase situations, right? Because he could have put the trigger on that roll back into the corner. Right. And that's like what Roy wants, right? But instead, he just kind of took it for data. I feel like old reliable is the old. Chase it with a dash and down smash with him. But you got like sliding forward, so you got all sorts of tech in your back pocket True. in Salt One. As he gets a back air from center of town, even up this game. All right, get the big body slam going. The Koopa Claw. Yeah, they're just trading back and forth here. Oh no though, Salt One said it's my turn. Evens the percentages from zero. Creative mode indeed, Fleck. <laughs> Creative mode, you pick an aerial and you reach for the stars. Up, it's up Ooh. smash, not gonna pan out. Didn't punish like expected. What were you gonna say? Yeah, about that? It, it was that tech chase situation we're talking about. But, oh, trying to drag down with the double edge dance instead. And this is what Roy loves oh, about town. Oh my gosh. What a statement depth. off of the side platform. Yeah. He took that page out of Face Mage's book. Yeah. Exactly how the last set ended, except it's a Roy who definitely would not have recovered if he missed that. He but. doesn't have jumps. He didn't have a stock to play with. It was do or die. And, uh, and do he did. Yeah, he chose do. Great stuff by Salt One. Really great set, even though that was over in the blink of an eye, which I guess we expected, because they're two sluggers, Bowser and Roy. Yeah. Just going at it, but Salt won. One and slugger slugged harder. He's still playing like he wants to win this tournament, yeah. despite being in losers. Definitely. Already. And he can. I mean, anyone who's still in this bracket can win. There's some. Yeah, let's take a look at that bracket production. That's a great idea. Show us that bad boy. Take so, it away. So we just caught up on the losers' quarterfinals matches. Salt one with a statement over Leon, including a great three stock victory. And then Base Mage versus Ned was a. Uh, man, that one was probably the highlight of the tournament so far. Yeah, we have four more combatants. I think all of them could really go the distance if mm -hmm. the stars align for them. Base Mage and Salt one is going to be an interesting one. I feel like that's one of those. He, both of his characters are characters that Base Mage very much enjoys playing. Yeah. And. Uh, that one He's seems no to me to like it would be a cloud pick, but I'm not really. There's a reason that Salt One is the one playing the games that we're just here talking about, right? So right, right. I, I won't pretend I can get into his head. We're watching the spectacle that is that matchup. But I think first we're going to get Winter Apollo Stars. Kage and Riddles. Yeah, and this should be a treat. I'm really excited for this one. Uh, again, as we mentioned, Apollo Kage, uh, he's actually the lone Midwest representative remaining. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he's going to be looking to defend the Midwest here at Frosty Fossings 15 with the A button snake. We saw that creativity on full display in his match earlier versus Salt One. What a highlight that one was too. Definitely. He's a regular. He's here mostly every year from what I remember. And uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure who Riddles is going to opt for between Kazuya and Terry. But I'd imagine both of them do pretty well against Snake. I'm going to... Anything with kill power is good against Snake. Kazuya first, but I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have to see. It's, it's going to be tricky because that advan both of their advantage states are going to be disrupted by grenades so much. Yeah. So it's you're going to have to play off of the grenade and then change your advantage state accordingly, no matter which character he picks. So we'll find out here soon enough.
Yeah, lots of different things you can do out of grenade stun too with either character. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure you could do some really creative stuff with EWGF. Yeah. But we'll have to find out. And he's, he's thinking about it. He's getting his music picked and ready to go. The music is important. Or actually, no, I think that is the, the gaming gen assigned headset for the stream, if I'm not mistaken. So he's got the game audio in. Is he? Oh, yeah, he's putting it on. Yeah. Supposedly the hardest character to fight without audio is Snake. Oh, that that is for sure. I've you want entered, those headphones more I've entered than you many want ignitions where I've run into I don't have a headset for the game audio <laughs> Snake, and then I just am really, really sad. Yeah, you want to hear the grenade pools, you want to hear specifically the C4, because that's, that's so sneaky, especially when, when Snake is up in the sky. Right, both the sound effect and the audio cue. Apollo Kage going in with these A buttons. And already Who's Karita comboing who at the moment? It is wow, a zero a to death. death. Off to the races so far is Big Boss. But okay, here you go. <laughs> he just comes down and says, all right, is it my turn? We're truly at an FGC tournament. Yeah. Is it my turn yet? No doubt. <laughs> the very cinematic grab is going to come into play here. Riddle's gonna have Apollo Kage off stage, gonna trace him so low with the up B. That was really just going for damage, because like, there's, there's not much else you can do in that spot to like, yeah, knock him that away. Low, yeah. And then continue the carry, so that was really smart from Riddle. And you have the grenade even ruining the cinematic throws. Wow, these throws plus the grabs are really adding up. These throws plus the grenades, rather. Well, setting up shop under this small battlefield platform, though, is Apollo Kage. He's got that C4 just to back him up. Oh, but the rage grab, exploding snake. Yeah, and Riddle's going to take the lead now here in this set. Ooh, Ooh, good snipe. Amazing laser. Had to find the angle under the Nikita, and there's some armor for your trouble. C4 going to be a little off the mark. That could have been the stock. I, I think AK thought he had the stick, but it, as well, it doesn't matter too much because he's able to continue the chase with the down air. Yeah, and this set is just nuclear. Yeah, they're slugging. This is such an aggro top eight. I love it. Okay, Whoa. hello? And missing the stick again. Man, I've been saying, what Say was it. he cooking? What <laughs> was he redacted? Still looking for these sticks. Those down throws Ooh. on the platform. Ooh not going to be enough even with the C4 and that's just going to be the game. Makes a crater with him on the ground and <laughs> trades with the first one but they're both laughing about it. <laughs> Apollo Kage had some spicy ideas there and it was almost enough to KO until Riddles just said no thanks I'm taking this win. You're getting a little too creative for your own good I need to shut you right, down. Right right he knows too much. He must be silenced. Maybe that's the secret. The secret is stop Apollo Kage from having fun while he's playing <laughs> Snake. That, that is your only win condition. <laughs> but are you having fun? One second. But like, shaking, headset back on. He knows what he's got to do. We just got to see if he can execute now. Yep, back to the same stage. Not to, at all a surprise, really. Both of them were getting their game plan on very successfully here. Ooh, okay, that's a good punish. Yeah, my favorite sets to watch, at least from a psychological standpoint, are the ones without <laughs> stage switches. And these Apollo Kage combos. We the keep saying combo. creative, but it feels like he just makes a new one every time he hits the sticks. They, they're, they're all good buttons, Thwack. They're sure. all good buttons. Uh, yeah, and, and that is very apparent in what we just witnessed those first 30 seconds. Yeah, now, now slowing the game down, trying to stay away from that EWGF distance. Did he detonate that or did that explode on its own? I don't know. He detonated it. Thank you, production. I, I was going to say, eyes. I didn't hear audio. Yeah. But production can confirm that he detonated it. Ooh, and that actually could have been a really scary spot. But instead, the big boss is... I think he wanted to explode himself up there to get another up Literally. There. Takes turns, runs off the platform, tries to get more. Riddle struggling to find his first stock. Yeah, got to find a way through these grenades. The grenades are doing just so well at walling out on these small battlefield platforms. Ooh, the spot dodge grenade boom stuns him up and sets him up for another stock for Apollo Kage to take.
The snake wall is so strong at the moment, oh and it's my over! God. Oh, that was a game two speed run, any percent <laughs> from the side of Apollo Kage. A minute and 30 seconds, a minute and 25 seconds, rather. R Riddles let him have fun. Yeah. That was the problem. <laughs> my goodness. And, the, and we can hear the St. Louis, St. Lusians, that St. Lu the St. Louis residents <laughs> in the, the Saint crowd Louisians. cheering for their boy as yeah, he loud makes and a proud. statement on the one seat of the tournament. Don't forget Riddles, uh, top 10 caliber player in the world. Loud and proud uh, as they should be. Paulo Kage, a top 20 caliber player in the world, so the gap's not that far off. Yeah, he's coming. And he's making statements here at Frosty Fastings. Here we go to Kalos Pokemon League for game number three. Is it all right? It's time to change the stage. A little too much cooking has been taking place. Yeah, it, it was pretty clear there that it was hard for Kazuya to get under the grenade platform wall. Yeah. Right? Oh, but we're going for a ride here. There's a little creative mode right back from Riddles. Wow. The damage. That was so much damage in such a short span of time, and I keep saying that, but it's never not impressive by these two characters. There, the I, I think the electric just kind of carried the uh, the grenade explosion yeah. a little bit. Very he looks safe. Oh, I'm surprised I didn't kill. Well, rage is here. Yeah. Now it killed. 180 though. Don't forget, Snake eats his Wheaties. He, he is a very big boy, but doesn't matter too much for Kazuya because Kazuya's yeah. damage is wild. You gotta see how early he can kill him with rage. Oh my goodness, tries oh. to end it all, ends it all anyway. I think there was a little bit of a blunder on the side of Apollo Kage, and if you're Riddles, you're taking that to the bank and capitalizing as much as possible. Oh yeah, for sure. This is gonna be a long walk for Apollo Kage to get back into this game three, especially with the burst that we know Riddles has. Totally. Oh my dead. goodness. Okay. You end the game with a spike, I end the game with a well spike. Well then. Even Steven. Said screw your cypher. <laughs> now, Apollo Kage, he's been here before, right? I, I think one SD into a bad game isn't going to really deter him in this game four. But your leash is running out. Right. And Riddle's a very passionate and confident type player that, that could really ride that momentum into this game four if he's not careful. He will take the freebie. So yeah. We most certainly take those. But I'm, I'm still anticipating a competitive set here, despite a couple of just statement wins both ways. Here I'll we go to Smashville for game four. Yeah, I'll take another game five if the uh, gods do say so. I'm cool with that. I hope chat's cool with it. That'd be great. Their, their riddles respected the grenade behind him and still Apollo Kage was able to get the strong punish. He always finds his conversion. Okay, that platform was a scary place to be for Apollo Kage, though. Yeah, that rage yeah, is so that? strong. They're always going for these stock enders, and I respect it. Lands safely, gets onto the platform, gets his confirm, and that's a stock for Riddles. That was a sneaky EWGF if there ever was one, right? Yeah, honestly. Oh, but the pressure! That pressure! He had the grenade in hand with the back air. There was just nothing Riddles could right. do in the corner. He stunned him in shield for five ever, dude. And then just let the up tilt Usually rip. Usually Riddles is the one stunning you in shield for five ever. Yeah. Oh, but what a play. Yeah, catch this back air. And now, Apollo Kage, winner's final stock. He does have the... Okay, the grenade drops. And the combo still... He'll take a zero to 50. Yeah, I mean, you're not complaining, but you still got to find that conclusion to the stock. It, the bleeding has to stop somewhere here. Oh, yeah. Point yeah. blank Nikita. Not enough to kill Kazuya. Stick online. There you go. Okay. There it is. Paul Kage is in this game, but he is battered and bruised. Yeah, that felt like a perfectly placed trap. Lured him to the right side of the stage the best he could. Got the C4. And these snake KOs always look so calculated, but from Apollo Kage, they look even more tactful. He's got to be real careful still. Yeah. And now Riddles can play it pretty slow. Now he's out of that ledge trap spot. 
Oh, but okay, grenade starts something. 158 is the new zero, and just as I say that, Riddle says, not today. What a weird hitbox on that attack, too. It was like Snake was to the left of him, still got hit by the strong Yeah, it hit. wasn't the move I was actually expecting at all. I was expecting him to like reset there or something, but he just came in swinging, and shout out to Riddles. Yeah, Riddles. Very great showing versus making our it look, Midwest Snake player. Making it look super clean in that game number four. You, you give him the freebie in game three, and then just take it to the bank. Make yeah. it to grand final, so good stuff to Riddles. Uh, sending, of course, Apollo is not out of this tournament yet. He is going to be in Losers Finals waiting for the winner of our next match, which will be Base Mage versus Salt One. Yeah, zero question as to whether or not he should have played Kazuya or Terry in that matchup. Kazuya mm -hmm. seemed to be the clear winner with so much potential to just nuke a stock as quickly as Snake could. The answer almost seemed clear from the start. Yeah, it was evident in the gameplay, and I know that AK does struggle a little bit with like first Kazuya. I mean, most people do, right? He, Kazuya just has such strong options, right? They're yeah. So strong. And it makes sense that when, like, you have to be a little bit more creative playing around the grenades, right? You can't just go for flowchart uh, EWGF combos that work on everyone else. Right. But when you have as much veteran presence as Riddles does, he knows how to fight Snake. Yeah. So it make, and, makes and a ton of sense. And that was clear today. That experience was brought to the table. Mm -hmm. And how. So the number one overall seed does make it to Grands. There was definitely some fights along the way. Yeah. You know, there were there was some close calls versus actually a, a base mage still in the bracket, don't forget. Yeah. To, to game five very, it, it was a two stock in game five, so it wasn't last stock last hit, but that, that was a, a yeah. nail biter of a set in so, winter semis. Yeah, we're back to this loser's bracket. Winner of Base Mage and Salt One will play Apollo Kage, who just lost to Riddles, for a shot at beating Riddles in Grand Finals. Both these players looking for runbacks, actually. Yeah. Salt One lost to AK, and Base Mage lost to Riddles, so. Everyone wants their turn. But Puff only Roy. one person's gonna get it. Looks, looks like I was completely wrong about thinking about going Cloud, so. Yeah. Go me. Roy's for, our boy. First time I've ever been wrong on stream. Ever. Did you know that? Yeah. Ever. Has to happen to someone eventually, I guess. Oh. Are you okay? Are you running a fever? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what's wrong? I need to catch my breath. Yeah. But yeah, going right to Pokemon Stadium. Close your eyes. It's almost like you're watching Melee. Okay, who am I? Roy's in Melee? I didn't know that. Yeah, he has blue <laughs> hair and a blue cape. Crazy. But yeah, uh, Puff gonna go in, fall off these platforms. Forward throw, Assault One trying to get him off stage because we know what happens when you get the Roy off stage as Jigglypuff. Mm -hmm. Love going for the dare to set up a, a quick follow up as the punish for that sink. Uh, I think slug, yeah, slugging aerials in disadvantage is really gonna be all Roy has to save himself from some of these uh, these Puff off stage strings, right? Yeah. So I think we're just gonna see the, the, the chasing ghosts as you speak. Right, and while Puff, I mean, while Puff has to uh, slug too, I mean, Roy's are a little bit more disjointed, so he does have that going for him. But he doesn't have this dash attack defense, and uh, Base Mage is going to take the first stock here. Here comes Base Mage again, getting just a quick little two piece. And the tech chase? Oh, that's, oh. is that an attempt wow. at a sh I don't think that shield does, but it doesn't matter. Salt One had the up B, ripped Roar in for him. I thought he expected the jab lock and then the get up, but that was okay. a huge falling up air from base mage, converted into a rest. And the meteor, or uh, the, the, the falling KO in the background. Yeah. It's gonna save you from any kind of punish on the back end, so. Pretty much freezes time for the Jigglypuff. Star KO, why couldn't I think of Star KO? What, <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> You really are. You only see that in like literally every game I've ever commentated, at least one. To Counter. be fair, we haven't seen as many today. But yeah, goes for the counter. Probably predicted some sort of quick aerial off the ground. Does that kill? I'm shocked it didn't, Flack. That's I, wild. I mean, I know it's like at this point everyone knows that move kills absurdly early, but sometimes it still just gets you. Okay, quick jump, gonna save Salt One here, get out of that low recovery that we saw. Base Mage was so good at exploiting versus Ned Sephiroth. Right. Don't and even want to be there. Base Mage surprisingly finds his way back to the stage. 
Okay, again, the dash attack not crossing up, and Salt One punishes in kind. Gonna even up these stocks. Yeah, and I mean, Salt One, you gotta play so grounded, avoiding the ledges of those stages at all costs. And just take your little one piece, two piece, and then let Puff kind of do this floating in the air game. She has to come back down to the ground at some point, right? Right. And then you can punish accordingly. That's when you pound. Huge counter from the side of Salt One, though. Really abusing this idea of the landing counter that Roy and these Fire Emblem characters have at their arsenal. Oh, thought he had a jump scouted. Okay, good DI. Somehow avoiding the jab to back air. Landing double edged dance. We've seen that a couple of times today from Salt One. And there, the up tilt out of the shield. We'll clutch the. I think that was a comeback stock. He was down a little bit there. Yeah. But just swatting away that Jigglypuff like a fly eventually will pay off. Yeah, he. Uh he was getting lapped for a second, but once he got to that last stock, he had like a 60% string. And then after some scraps and some like slow paced shielding and swinging, he found that up tilt. That was a good decisive game one from Mr. Saul One. Yeah, that last stock, he just really did not get knocked too far off of like the base of Pokemon Stadium. Like he, for he was sure. just chilling in center stage in that Pokeball in the ring. When you have firm stage control like that, <clears throat> it's up to uh, base mate to find a way to solve it, and just the, the answer never came. You're right. He made a fortress, and base mate wasn't allowed in. Here we go. Small battlefield it will be for game number two. No character swap, which I do not find surprising in the slightest. Yeah. If he gets some games on the board, maybe he'll consider it. Maybe. It's such a weird mix-up, though, when you win and change characters. <laughs> it's not talked about enough. Oh, I, I love the mind game of that. Yeah, that's so funny. But no need here at all for Salt One. And again, a disadvantaged aerial. The up air just able to sneak away, take away any attempt at the platform deck chase. Very clutch defenses. Yeah, right on. Salt One really punishing those Ooh. those choices to roll when base mage lands. Then that forward smash in the corner rip of all things from Jigglypuff. Shocked that the puff is still alive after eating that sweet spot back there. Totally. Yeah, he ducks and weaves. Now he's being a little more elusive on stage. And another great tech to make sure the recovery weakness isn't too strong, at least for uh, Salt One's case. And he goes for an up throw, not enough to KO yet. Yeah, a little bit more, and he's definitely in danger. But instead, he just opts for the forward air. That's going to take it. Base Mage playing from behind now. Ooh, the delay between second and third hits and double edge dance. Take it base mage off guard a bit. Yeah. The damage adding up now. And now he's just getting so much extra damage. Base mage really Ooh. good at making his opponents play patiently, but Cola or Salt One really adjusting to that patience and acting accordingly. And he doesn't need to overcommit for anything. Don't need to go for like crazy reads. Yeah. Puff is so light that really any of Roy's sweet spot moves should just get the job done at this point. That up air just a little short actually. So I, I second time I've ever been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> ever. Oh jump. Ooh, the chain of forward airs. The biggest trade of his life took place five seconds ago on the left side of the. Base Mage's of. burst potential on these edge guards again comes in the clutch. It's insane, dude. It's like it's such a coin flip once the once the bears start chaining. And now we have an even game, zero percentage, one stock here on small battlefield. And okay, the dares begin. What's the lead up gonna be? Just go for Holy a forward throw. Crap, base mage. He's in there, and that's the game. One-one. You mentioned it a couple of base mage sets ago when we were talking about how that forward throw, it's just a positioning forward throw, but the positioning is so important for base mage that he, you, when you see a double down air in the center of small battle, you're thinking like, go for a rest follow up, right? But instead it's just forward throw, and then I can just take my sweet time. I just have to eat one jump and then one up beat, and that's exactly. it. Exactly, and it's like, even if, Obviously, Jigglypuff forward throws you sometimes, and if they can't make it to you on time, right? If they're dashing at you, they're gonna make you think they're doing something when you get up. So they'll jump immediately, and it seems like Base Mage always catches those jumps straight out of it. 
it was just great risk reward assessment in the advantage state from base mage and it led to a, a definitive game win oh, okay but there you go the the forward are in disadvantage where you don't expect Roy to have time to throw out an aerial clutching a stock alive right and Roy's forward air isn't so committal that it'll put him in a disastrous situation where he's falling for a few seconds. Forward air, you can just throw them out like candy. Yeah, and I think he's got no jump. Yes, that's why you see the up be a little bit too early. That platform again, it looks like it's a, a safety valve to try and avoid, evade some of these ledge trap scenarios, but it ended up being his demise. Yeah, his demise it was. And Salt One looking like or not, base mage looking like he's kind of in the driver's seat this game. And maybe, maybe Puff's so floaty that like jab back air is harder to hit. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We really haven't seen too many jab back airs. Any like conversions off a of jab in general, mm -hmm. they're so much harder. Okay, good parry. Just keep your stage control here for Salt One. Wow, and he lives. A two 148 on percentage in a dream. Finding the right angle there, going a little bit like to the right, and then using the drift to find the recovery, and that way you don't get stuffed out by a forward air trade. Yeah, that F smash on shield was costly. Got him up here to the or up thrown to the heavens. And okay, this is now finally the percent where Roy can start to get some damage done. Right. Puff's percent was so high that really like any of the confirms was not happening. Yeah, it looked like he wasn't even like hitting him. It was so much harder for him to connect. Now with the rage in the back pocket, this could be a, I was wondering if like double edge dance would show up, but instead he's trying to catch some jumps. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, base mate's gonna find his way back to the stage. Goes to the ops for the other side of Kalos. Find his way to the ground. Someone not expecting that kind of lets him back on stage. But the parry into the forward tilt is going to take base mage to his last stock. Great comeback stock on stock number two here for Salt One. He's knocked away, though, and there's Huge another trade. trade. He doesn't even try. He knows his fate and says, we move to the next stock. Live by the Roy sword, die by the Roy recovery, right? That's right. That's going to cost Salt One here, and even this stock one game apiece. Woo! Ooh, double jumps, gets caught off the forward air. Obviously, he's on the stage, so it's not super threatening. That's a scary place to be. Don't get double edge dance there, and don't let your jump disappear. Ooh, Ooh good recovery. He fell so low, but so quickly, and that's one of those things where you need to move it quicker so they can't react as quickly. Yeah, that it's scary to fast fall there off the stage, like because then you'll just die. But okay, yeah. I guess we summoned it. Yeah. We summoned the jab to back air. It had been how many games and we hadn't seen a single one? The salt one does have it right where it counts the most. Yeah, the manifestation took place. And he got it done, and salt one will go up two one over base mage. And that that kill confirm situation again was predicated by just the ability to have control in your fast fall off the stage. That, that's like a, a thing that mid level players, right? They'd be scared to fast fall in that spot when you're Roy, when you have a you know Roy's recovery, right? Oh, ISD two hundred percent of the time trying that. But. Salt One's control of his own character made that much more confident. And it was clutch in order to avoid how dangerous uh, base mate has been off the stage. Yeah, that's a nuance that comes with playing these fast fallers that's not talked about a lot. Like Falcon, Fox, like they all experience this sort of thing. And it can really change the game if you're using that fast fall to your advantage. Indeed. It's, gonna def it's the difference between a 1 2 deficit and a 2 1 lead as you go to Hollow Bastion here for game number four. Right. Two double-edged dances off the rip. Sliding forward tilt just for a little bit of stage control. Oh, but you're going to pay for it? Oh, wow. Yeah. Billy Puff was looking to just get the, the, the tap dance down air on the top of Roy's head for going for that upbeat. And right. then Salt One tried to get like a different angle on it. It was just a little too short. Ooh, OK, what you got? A forward throw. Yeah, it was such, <laughs> it was such a low percent sleep. I feel like there wasn't even time to. I don't even know, like, I mean, I guess you can't set too much up because it's low percent, but. I, I, I had I had dreams in my eyes. <laughs> You're like, show me the craziest down air arrest <laughs> conversion I, I've I ever want, seen. I want puff shenanigans right now, and then it was four though. Oh man. <laughs> I wanted to see five down airs into Woo! something beautiful. That, that was an F smash. Yeah, he was going for broke right there. And that probably would have killed if it sweet spotted. It does not matter where you are on Hollow Bastion if you're Pop. 
definitely. But instead, everyone's living. Yeah, Blazer trades. Salt One back on stage. It's his stage now. Yup, and just using that movement to commit Puff to some kind of option. And in this case, it was a forward or a forward air to try and like poke on like a platform approach. But instead, swat him out of the skies with that there. And now we are on Base Mage's first tournament stock of this top eight. Okay, going for just the, the damage on the double edge dance. And another back air out of the jab after we uh, hadn't seen one for so long. Some two game clinchers in a row here for Salt One, who will move on to Losers Finals to get his run back on Apollo Kage. Yeah, that jab back air is showing itself as that safe, comfortable way to kill when you're in those last stock situations. I was gonna say the percentage wasn't mattering much when you're base mage towards the end of those games because you're getting these very like abstract kills off stage, but Cola didn't even give that a chance to manifest, or Salt One didn't even give that a chance to manifest. They just yeah, let just, him rock. Just strong control of the stage. You mentioned also in the, the Ned Salt One set that uh, Sephiroth's ground speed was just so good at forcing Puff's drift to like commit to one direction or another. Yeah. And that, that principle definitely applied for Roy, who's a little bit faster, I believe, than Sephiroth. But guys, uh, before we get to Loser's Finals of Frosty Frosty 15 Smash Ultimate, we gotta take a short ad break, we gotta pay some bills. Don't go anywhere, folks. We will be right back with Apollo Kage for Salt One. Blazing Strike, a wealth of mechanics both modern and classic, now featuring GGPO rollback netcode. Paradise Arcade Shop, the original all-button thin controller, the first mobile fight stick app, the first short throw cherry buttons, and many other cutting edge controller innovations. The Dragon Ball Battle Hour is coming to Las Vegas March 4th and 5th. Come see the finals for Dragon Ball Fighters, Dragon Ball Super Card Game, and Dragon Ball Legends to find out who the world champion is. Hitbox brings you new ways to take control of the game. Head over to hitboxarcade.com slash FFXV where you can order the Hitbox, Smashbox, and Crossup. Texas Showdown. This is one of the oldest FGC tournaments around. With 20 tournaments on the roster for 2023, this is the event to be at if you're into anime fighters or just great Houston food. Super TSB, featuring five main tournament titles. Exert, Strive, BBCF, KOF 15, and DNF Duel. Homebrew Haven, presented by Butt69 and the Moorhead FGC with $100 pot bonuses for all games. Turning Point, compete in Guilty Gear Strive, Tekken 7, or Super Smash Brothers, and prepare for one of the first big Street Fighter VI events of the summer. MDF, Magical Defense Force, is a magical girl action comedy kinetic novel. Features nine chapters of a 24-chapter story and over 500 unique art assets. Is your fit cursed? Do you have no riz? Fix this immediately with official Frosty Faustings merchandise. You're watching Frosty Faustings 15. Here's our schedule for today.
What is up, guys? We are back with Frosty Fosting's Ultimate Top 8. My name is Thwack, and we got Sturm, Lord Sturm. We're, uh, we're hanging out. We're having ourselves a good Saturday afternoon, watching some awesome Smash, some very aggro Smash. Man, this has been just a, a slobber knocker of a Top 8. This is a, a unique Top 8, if I do say so myself. Some really exciting games, and this Losers Finals here is Hey, run back. Gonna, yeah, it's gonna keep the same like tempo we've had with these last three. Oh yeah, it, it should be aggro all the way down. We're going from Snake versus Roy into one of those two versus Kazuya, right? So it's, it's just gonna be buttons and buttons and buttons. But as you see here, Salt One starting on Roy in this set. Remember, he, he did some Cloud in yeah, the previous set. He started set. on the Cloud too, yeah? I think it was only one game of Cloud and then he went to Roy. Gotcha. And it looks like he was feeling hot on the Roy against Base Mage, too, so, like, why not just stick with the Roy, you know? Yeah, Salt One's ground control in that set versus Space Mage was so impressive, and we're seeing it continue here on this first stock. He just is using that speed, not letting Apollo Kage really set up shop under any of these platforms until just this moment, where now the grenades are hanging out. Yep. Yeah, look how he delayed that, waited for the grenade to proc, and just maximized the damage the best he could and gets that armor through the Nikita, but it won't be enough. The persistence from Apollo Kage clutches out the first stock. I you, know. you think the Nikita's sniped by the invulnerability on the up B, but instead he's just, okay, I got these toes for you. Right, Salt One was like gritting his teeth, we can pass all these projectiles, doing his very best to get back to stage, but Apollo Kage said, no, I'm not done. Swat the snake out of the sky here with a forward air, evens up these stocks, evens up these percents almost. Yeah, the grenades are flying. He doesn't get the tech chase he was looking for off the snake down throw. But he does get this down air. And that, that tech chase wasn't really like a tech chase. It was just kind of like a, I'm going to lay you down and I'm going to go hide behind my grenade because you're definitely not going to roll into the grenade. That would be very silly of you. Totally. Dude tries to get that horizontal launch off the down smash. Is it going to get it? And now Salt One's in the driver's seat as his flow gets completely disrupted. <laughs> These two like to swing it, right? Like they, they're just big buttons, big strong buttons each way. Yeah, it looks like. And speaking of one of the strongest buttons in the game, the up tilt will close it out. Yeah, that is the great equalizer. It seemed like twice now, Salt One had the read on some of these higher ledge options that uh, Apollo Kage opted for. But was just a little bit off the mark with the execution. And now he's on his last stock here in this game one. And we got a stick situation but somehow staying alive here is AK. And yeah, okay, he just uses the stick to help recover. How sneaky of him. That is smart. Leave it to Apollo Kage. Ooh, tries to trade with the upbeat, but Salt One letting it rip early, hits him and finds his way back to the stage. Okay, full three jabs into get punished. Yeah, I think literally anything would have just deleted him at that point. Back here was the move of choice. Now Salt One really got to get some damage <laughs> packed on because he's bleeding out. Salt One needs the stage control more than anything right now. Okay, and the grenade, grenade in his yeah. hand explodes. Cleaning up the JV two stock for Apollo Kage in game one. That's the result of a really like unfortunate game of hot potato, you know? That's, yeah. <laughs> that's literally like the depiction. You hold the potato too long, you lose. And in this case, <laughs> losing was the grenade exploding. Yeah, the, the handoffs of the grenades, it's kind of tricky because you, you want to be throwing out your aerials and then your aerials will just pick up items, right? Because yeah. that's, that's how aerials work in this game. The Cloud is back to play for game two. Okay, he knows something we don't. It, it could very much have to follow in mind with the choice of stage as well. Yeah, we're sticking to stadium though. So. Oh wait, we were on stadium. I lied. Me when I lie. Okay, just going for, again, big aerials, trying to cross up a grenade here or two. Really don't want to let Snake set up shop under the platform on the stadium. Exactly. That, that's the plan. I want to see an attempt to thwart out some of those higher recoveries that Apollo Kage was going for, like the really high limit climb hazard we saw in that first set. Yeah, uh, Cloud is a little bit better at that than Roy is for sure. Right, so. Roy is very much stuck to like the lower hemisphere of the stage. That, that control of the stage was so good for uh, Salt One in a couple of those other matches, though. But yeah. May maybe the change of tempo here is important, and that's why he's switching to Cloud. Ooh, and just lands with the rawest down air. 
That'll get it done. Yeah, lets it rip, doesn't spike, doesn't do anything, just knocks him up and takes that stock. And now he can put on some pressure with those blade beams. It's not like much, but it stops the grenades in their tracks, and it doesn't let Apollo Kage place them exactly where he wants them, right? Definitely. The rare double cross slash combo. Or a, there's a blade beam in cross slash, sorry. Especially from his last set, it seems like blade beam is his most opted for limit tool. Mm -hmm. I think it's just like, you get to turn back some of the pressure that Snake's constantly throwing at you with one big projectile. That right. can do like 30%. And okay, get the up B out of shield. Create even more space. Yeah, we'd love to see that. Gonna get the grab on the regular get up. Putting Apollo Kage in a pretty tough situation. Perfectly timed air dodge though. Stop any of the cypher shenanigans Ooh. from happening. Ooh. Doesn't get the spike. It's not over yet. And that trade was great, but oh, hello! Oh my goodness. Not even a roll off the get up. It was a roll when he got on the stage. He put the C4 there to bait the roll. Yeah. Brilliant from Your only there. option was jump in that moment, and unfortunately, jump was not chosen for Salt One. The homie grenade <laughs> helping yeah, with right. the recovery. How slick was that? Not slick enough, apparently, for Salt One, who just shoves with the down smash. I was gonna say, he's holding that grenade for a while. It's gotta be on a timer. Salt One letting these forward airs rip. And yeah, just going for back throw as the punish there on the forward tilt on shield. I'm wondering if he could have gone with something a little stronger, but... Yeah, it might have been a tempo thing. He just wanted to keep the pace going. I'm not too sure. But now, shop is set up here for Snake. But okay, the back throw there is pretty brilliant because it just didn't even present any hitbox towards the grenade behind him. Totally. Yeah, now they're just taking turns swinging. Ooh! But the conversion into the up air is going to get it for Apollo Kage. Looks like they're going to be running the stage back, too, from the gestures. Yeah. Salt One's trying to just come up with some kind of answer for this. It felt like he did have control of the stage a little bit more there and was able to stop some of the shop setting up right. But as soon as that last stock happened and Apollo Kage, he got the momentum from that forward smash, right? And then he was able to really develop his camping gameplay under the platform there. Yeah. Which, that is... Having that like fundamental neutral advantage of the grenades under the uh, Pokemon Stadium platforms is what lets his creativity start. Right, it's like breaking into the bunker and yeah, exploiting your just arsenal of weapons out here. And nobody does it like Apollo Kage. Mm -hmm. But these dash attacks are getting Salt One a lot of mileage at the moment. He's even able to get a forward air, but it doesn't spike. The hardest F smash. At least 2.5 seconds of charge just thrown right in there, too. And you know, that's a big deal. Okay, but a good recovery right back for AK. A lot of back airs as well. I thought he might have been dead again, but instead, still holding on a little bit of life in the stock. Yeah, Apollo Kage with some obvious trailing to do. I'm sure he's no stranger to it, though. Yeah, the, the setting up shop under the platforms is not nearly as effective when you're this far behind. Yeah. Because now Salt One does not need to rush the approach. Because then the timer's not on your side. And he can, he can take trades. This yeah. is a spot where training the snake, actually not the worst thing in the world. Totally. Cloud is a strong character who trades well in the first place, so. Ooh. But if the trade does put your life at stake, why not just stay on and milk it longer, you know? Yeah, and, and just the movement from Salt One is so good, he, he does not need to overcommit. Totally. Ooh, makes some air dodge with the blade beam. He gets back to stage, though, right back on there safely. But the dash attack's gonna do it. Easy KO. That, that snake was at like 170 or something. Very yeah. high percentage. And blade beam adding a quick 30% back here. This, this might just be one of your shake your head and move on to the next one if you're at AK, but he does find an up tilt. Yeah, no three stock. That will not be happening. Okay, Ooh. find the spot dodge on the fifth hit of the cross slash, because that shield was so low, you would not have been able to shield the fifth hit. Yeah, notice how he threw that grenade at the very last second, got the combo off of it. And now he just looks so comfortable, and that's going to be a game for Salt One. Yeah, that Nikita, probably a misinput, I'm going to have to guess. Yeah. 
I will definitely die to a forward smash. So there you go, Salt one on the board in this loser's final set. Even if you let it drop, that could be one of the laggiest moves in Smash. The forward smash? Or no, 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 Nikita. Nikita. Yeah, N Nikita, pretty hard to recover out of. You, you had really your choice of punishes. Even though I think Salt one let that forward smash rip before he knew that the missing input happened. Yeah. So it was, it was another just attempt to shut the door, and it absolutely did. Yeah, 100%. Sticking with the cloud, sticking with the snake, of course. I did not see the stage pick, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this just be a run they back. They just ran it back again. Oh, no, okay. It's the run it back in air quotes of small battlefield. Yeah. You know, it's a little different than, than Pokemon Stadium, but not much. Ooh, shields the grenade, tries to get the contact explosion. And using that down tilt, which we haven't really seen someone use too much on this character. Yeah. But it has an application. The sword legs, you got them. Or no, salt one, you said. Yeah, yeah, salt one. That that slip and slide, like the, yeah. me the Mega Man down tilt, basically. You mean the Sephiroth down tilt? Oh, there's yeah, there's like four or five characters yeah. that have that down tilt now. Mega Man did it first. True. He was doing it when we were in diapers. <laughs> True. Before, or when the other ones were in diapers. Before too. most Smash players were even born. Let's be real. Ooh, okay. I did not think that hit in time, but proving me wrong, tries to connect the up smash too. That mortar was so sneaky. Yeah, there were so many moving pieces that looked like they could have connected right there. Oh, and a great recovery back from Salt One. I don't know how he avoided that Nikita, but he was just, he's comfortable with the character. And then a grenade just explodes and kills you. Yeah, shout out to Apollo Kage for knowing when that would explode, holding it for just the amount of time, doing the little counting in his head. This Let is a very rip. mathematical character, Snake. Yeah. You have to think about all sorts of timers. Things aren't looking too good yeah, for Sol One right now, but if he can find his footing, get this stock. Yeah, the, the grenades, there, there are so many, there are probably like 10 grenades pulled in those 10 seconds of gameplay. Totally. But the golf swing up smash will at least even up the stocks, while the damage is still racking up. That up tilt could have been everything. Back to slowing things down, sitting under the platform. The, the C4 didn't go off. It, the up tilt was everything for that second stock. It's yeah. just a different up tilt. Truly. That dinner could have been what Salt One needed to equal this. These air dodges out of the Cypher are so important because that, that down air from Cloud will linger forever on the hitbox, right? Yeah. So it's super easy to get the spike if you don't. Whoa, how bold are that you? That was so brave. That down tilt. I don't know if he knew maybe that like if he was crouching, it couldn't have hit him anyway, but still so brave. <laughs> I mean, from where we're sitting, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. He converted off his own explosion. Yeah, Salt oh. One knew that trick. <laughs> he, kn he knew the snake grenade to help the recovery trick. And geez, Salt One playing snake in a past life, clearly. <laughs> As it stands, there's still a little bit of a comeback that needs to happen here if Salt One wants to keep his bracket life alive. Yeah, he's pulling out all the stops. And getting some limit charges in, his, his limit's almost online. But this shop is closed at the moment here for Apollo Kage. Has no interest in approaching. He didn't even hold that limit for a second. Just let the blade beam rip. The immediate pressure, the position it would have put him in too would have been master class if he got it. Okay, this is a good spot though for Salt One as he starts to put on pressure, but oh, the grenade bails out AK. So much limit already. High recovery and we aren't gonna quite see the climb hazard and another grenade. He has to use a climb hazard to recover. That is going to fell on purpose to try to get something, but Apollo Kage not falling as far as he thought. And he hangs in there. This was once a three to one stock game. Wait, was it? I can't even remember. But it was a big lead. Yeah, Salt One throwing him back off stage. Going to take Ooh. the high recovery. Goes for that Yo! climb hazard. The climb hazard we talked about to snipe the high recoveries. The wave bounce on the grenade pull saved AK. And then the C4 told the rest of the story. That what was beautiful. A clutch victory for AK, and he breathes a sigh of relief, drinks from that giant water bottle, the getting ready for grand finals.
the C4 Maestro. There's something, also, there's something so intimidating about a player with a giant jug of water, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Someone so, brings that next to me while I'm playing. You know he's hydrated. Yeah. <laughs> hydrate or dehydrate. He chose hydrate, though. And the St. Louis crowd comes alive here at Frosty Fostings as the Midwest's lone rep remains in grand finals. And upsets Jeez. the seeding order. We had a one, two, three, four seeds in first, second, third, and fourth, potentially. But AK is going to move on to grand. But guys, before we get to grand finals, we're going to show you this. Four different players. But only one will be crowned the best of the Midwest. And the Holy Holy. I'm playing with pros no more. How the fuck? Maybe for the Welcome back, guys. That is the Midwest Ultimate Invitational. You saw all those big names in the Midwest Smash scene are going to be attending, and there are going to be four qualifying events. Be sure to sign up for those, and it's, I'm sure that, that is going to be a, a highlight of the summer. Definitely. You'll find your own way into that list of players. Yeah, that's that, gonna that be could be one. you in it the next trailer. Be. It could be you in the next trailer, guys. Uh, hope you're excited. Midwest Smash is as strong as it's ever been. Really happy to see it getting support from all over. Man, that, yeah, they, they had West Midwest, they had East Midwest. Some people say it should be divided into two different regions because the Midwest is so big, but man. Honestly. Get, get all the representation in there from every single side of the Midwest. So I'm happy to see it. We have one uh, Midwest Invitational player in attendance right now in Grand Finals, actually. It's Apollo Kage. We saw him in that trailer. Yeah, he just came off of the C4 of a lifetime. Finding his way into Grand Finals against our number one seed here, Liquid Riddles. Yeah, he's got to solve a problem like Kazuya at the moment and goes very, very low for another explosive spike, but not going to quite find the mark. Yeah, doesn't take too much of a punish off of it. He's going to find his way back to stage. Takes a laser, and now we're just fighting here for stage control itself. And Riddle's going to try to stop the campground under these small battle platforms with the reflect almost exploding him off the top with the grenade. Uh, a mechanic a lot of people forget about, especially if you're not playing against Kazuya often, or a Kazuya that's applying it often. But as it stands, everyone's living until I said everyone was living, at which point, easy stock for Riddles. Yeah, I'm curious to see how Apollo Kage will opt to adjust his play style, because Lit or Woo! Riddles looked really comfortable against Snake in that last set. And there's definitely some adjustments that need to be made, not letting him come back. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Yeah, he's got to use the C4 to recover. The classic, but he does recover as it turns out. Yeah, those high Cypher recoveries, while they are a great mix-up, they're really hard to get away with. And, but the C4 is on him for all the pressure. Doesn't turn into much. And we actually have a very close first stock here. This is second stock. Don't forget. Oh, three stocks to one now. First stock for Riddles, yeah. So he is three to one. Very much showing why he's in winner's bracket why he's the first seed, but I do believe Apollo Kage can find his way back into this. It's going to be a tough one in game one. Let's see, but... The heck is Kazuya so heavy for, bro? That did 40%. I know, dude. <laughs> okay, up tilt. Up tilt's pretty good. That's going to get you on the board here if you're AK. Yeah, he but said I have a cheap move, too. Still a lot of work to be done. Picks it up with the down tilt. Juggling these grenades. And yeah, immediately looking for high reward options like that forward air spike. Yeah, and Riddles is just controlling the sides of these stages like a menace. 
But okay, tricking him into getting grabbed so that then the mortar can be applied. Very good stuff. The aerial Nikita drops two of them. None of them hit their mark. Tries to convert that explosion into an up air. And but just, then up tilt. Yeah. He but used his own DLC move. Before DLC existed. Yeah. But that will clutch it out the up B out of the EWGF. Yeah, Good stuff. While, while Apollo Kage brought that a last stock, that was such a clean game overall from Riddles. Mm. Just played so well throughout. Yeah, th there just wasn't enough leash left for uh, Apollo Kage to complete the comeback, right? Yeah. And really, when you're at that high percent, Mr. Kage, it's just a matter of time before a Wind God Fist finds your face, and then, well, you saw what happened. Definitely. I mean, it was at the... It was off stage especially where he just looked like such a force to be reckoned with. There were at least like there were times where he had hit Snake four different times before he'd get back on stage, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that ledge trap on the side yeah. was so clean. And now it's just Trade City out here. Fifteen seconds into this match, they're throwing everything they've got at each other. Tries to get a Tech chase situation off the down throw. That shield's so low from Riddles, but somehow he doesn't get poked in any of those scrambles. Kind of crazy to think about. Definitely. Wave bounce grenade explodes into the up air, and that conversion, such a bread and butter for Snakes, but especially Apollo Kage. In this top eight alone, he's just had a bunch of them. Yeah, that lazy grenade really helped Apollo Kage land, but it did put the rage online here for Riddles. Yeah, Riddle's not looking nearly as comfortable as that first game, but as soon as I say that, takes the stock effortlessly. And now Apollo Kage at the disadvantage once again. Got to try to find this first stock as quickly as possible. Yeah, taking his time coming down from the skies, and Riddle doesn't really seem too phased. Like, he doesn't need to jump up there or anything. Bro. Yeah, 40%. 41.7, percent you, Oh, my you God. You blinked. You blinked in Apollo Kage. I literally Kage blinked. Don't blink or you'll miss it. That's what they say. But Apollo Kage, he said it's my turn. Yeah, he finds the I stock of the forward tilt. And now you, you gotta get your camp set up here. Okay, a couple of back airs is really nice. Yeah, the lingering back air to get him off stage at that very last hit is huge. Not gonna get too much out of the off stage situation. All right, not necessarily a trade you mind here for uh, Snake. And you're just creating your space. Totally, gonna hit the grenade. Gets it out of the way, but also just takes so much damage and gets knocked out of center stage. Both of them looking for a, a meaningful engage. Ooh. But the meaningful engage in question was the up tilt. And Apollo Kage going to take him the last stock. Apollo Kage really showing all of his movement tricks there. You know, B reversing the grenades. Wave bouncing all over. And oh my goodness, all of a sudden now, the damage output from Snake is ridiculous. Right, Can you get the stock for it? No, not yet. Yeah, Kazuya's weight really shining right now. Keeps him alive. 120% in a dream. Now AK slowing things down. No need to rush this. Yeah, he has to avoid literally everything not to die right now. Doesn't lose off of that down throw. And that's you're, gonna, you're gonna die here, but you got one in the bank, so. Let's see how AK can close that out, if he can, or if Riddles can make this comeback a reality. Riddles is at kill percent. Oh, the classic. You forget where the C4 was. Yep. I, fi I find it really easy to forget where the C4 is <laughs> when you kill Snake, and then it's still the C4 from the last stock. For whatever reason, it just leaves my mind entirely. It's so funny. Usually I try to keep track of him, too, but some of those slippery ones slide under the radar, especially when there's so many explosions taking place. There's yeah, even, no way you're hearing the audio. Even at the top either. level. It's like... Impossible to have a 100% remember rate of where the seat falls. Exactly. You need a Everyone slips up every nat 20 roll for perception. <laughs> even that might not be enough sometimes. So the set is now even at one game apiece. AK did take a game in the winner's final set. It was a three stop. And then the answer right back from Riddles was, I think, also a three stop. So. They'll just take turns three stocking each other. They are explosive do characters that. playing explosive game of Smash Ultimate, so it shouldn't be surprising, really. Definitely. I like the Hollow Bastion pick. It's better when Snake doesn't have platforms on the side, I feel. But and considering AK is probably gonna ban FD. Yeah. This is this is probably your best bet. Oh, the grenades saving your bacon once again. The C4 is just sitting there. Looking at Riddles menacingly, you want to stay away from it. 
explosions all abound. If Riddles were to approach there at all, he either gets hit for the jump or hit for the run-in. It doesn't even need to explode. The mere existence of C4 is such like a mind game. And so, on his way back to the stage, figures he'll do a heel drop and send him to the blast zone. I love spikes from the disadvantaged state like that. AK is showing how valuable aerials and disadvantage can be. And again, the damage, it's so explosive. 90% in the blink of an eye here. Definitely, and before Riddle starts abusing his offstage like disadvantage day more, he'll have to start thinking about uh, situations and, and instances like that spike that just took place. Okay, oh. you know, you can have one. It's on the house. He used Kamikaze. <laughs> Huge. Okay. That's damage. Zero to 60. The grenade assist. Oh, oh wow, this could be anyone. Yeah, these scrambles, man. Any, they can go any which way. Both players, though, showing some patience there. Not going to pull the trigger on anything crazy. Totally. As soon as you rush it is the moment you die. That hell sweep trying to sneak in, like, under a grenade, maybe? Yeah. I'm surprised his momentum stopped like that. But just like that, he's back in the driver's seat. But that down air will KO. I, I was scared you saw the Nikita missile in the magnifying glass, but AK managed to not SD. There's so many variables existing in this match. It's both exciting and stressful. I'd imagine as a player, it's even more stressful. Oh, yeah. Oh, but now there's no grenade to save you. Oh, my goodness. Riddles misses the last hit. That could have been everything. But it's not over yet. The one, C4 on hand. The one time there was no grenade to interrupt the advantage state. <laughs> Did Riddles <laughs> just fast fall there because he knew that the C4 was going to get pulled? Yeah, I think he didn't even want to worry about trying to shield it at the right. Or maybe his shield was so low that he had to go down there. But it costs him the game because the down throw to F tilt to that percent is confirmed. And all of a sudden, AK has got a 2-1 lead. I've actually never seen that before because I don't know if it's because his shield was too low or he was done trying to predict. Uh, it looks goofy though. It looks yeah. really goofy, but it yeah, did it did end up costing him the game. Like in a roundabout way because he put him in a corner situation. Yeah, it, it was one of those like, okay, I'm gonna run off. You got me, right? Oh, it's bright back here. <laughs> Hello. Someone hit the light switch. Someone you hit hear, the lights. You hear booze immediately. And we're going back to Hollow Bastion. Let's see who's more heartless here. Gonna kick things off with that down air. The Brawler Snake we know so well. Kazuya would be like the dawn of the heartless. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Does not want to deal with those grenades at all to the point where he just up these to create space. Definitely, and he's catching some of them, but can't catch them all. Damage though, just keeps adding up and up. Oh, okay. So that grenade exploded again preemptively. Almost had free reign to continue the punish, but yep, rage dive grab. So much damage. Real's pretty good about reading these rolls. Read them at the right time, and those are free stocks. Dash attack is creating so much space. Getting the stage control spot. Oh, the up airs make for quite the hazard. For the up smashes, Ooh. rather. Wow, what a conversion by Riddles. Yeah, just a quick two-piece. You can't yeah. interrupt that with a grenade, so it's easy with the seal to stop. Yeah, the awareness that he, had that, uh, that he had an opening to get that was everything. But so was that back air from the side of Apollo Kage. AK made that back air safe by just doing it right on top of the grenade, right? Like, if Riddles did shield in an attempt to punish, the grenade would just cause a trade. Oh, I thought that was a stick onto Riddles, but instead it just kind of fell off of him immediately. Yeah, the same old trades you'd expect in this matchup taking place, especially on the second stock here. Explosions all over the place. The fake committed to that Nikita, said, you know what, maybe this isn't worth it, let go of it, or maybe it was just a bait from the start. But neither of them can find this kill right now. Now you gotta take to the skies. Yeah. I love the sneaky Nikita when you're like in between yeah. the magnifying glass and not. That is That's a sneaky. situation where you need to have game audio because you can hear the Nikita very clearly. That's so true, yeah. And its audio is pretty distinct. Yeah. It's much louder than like the C4 or even the grenade. Yeah. Okay, just go for the scoop. Yeah, Riddle's gonna take as much 
percentage as he can right now before he moves on to this last stock. Make that cushion, why not? And here we are. Just tilt makes it a last stock gold. game. Riddles needs everything. to win this to stop a reset. Yeah, the reset is imminent. But Riddles got a lead. Who? Goes, goes for a grab and pays for it a bit. No, but at least he has the stage. We saw that down smash smite, spike in the winner set be so violent. Yeah, whiffs the C4. No C4 present, so he's free to let that rip. And Riddles takes us to a game five. I would expect no less from Riddles to find that clutch factor here. And we are going in game number five. Yeah. AK can reset the bracket with one more victory. And it will be his counter pick. Yeah. Because uh, uh, Hollow Bastion was Riddle's counter pick. So. so, yeah, let's see if AK has enough gas in the tank to cluster through this number one seed. I wouldn't be surprised to see Small Battlefield again, although I don't recall the the, uh, the DSR situation. Oh, it's just a run back. Yeah, run back. I know, I know that Chicago typically runs uh, three bands, no DSR, as our, as our rules. It is ignition rules confirmed by a production. Thank you very kindly. So he just wants to be here. Riddle's movement looking excellent on this first stock. But Apollo Kage starting to snuff it out and trade some damage back. Oh, good parry on the quick jab. Ooh, a beautiful catch on the landing by the long range down tilt. Grenade, he looks so funny <laughs> jabbing in hand with that grenade. Looks like he's protecting a baby, and that's not gonna kill. It required perfect DI, but yes, it did not kill. That move is so strong, and that scoops the ledge attempt. Well timed by Riddles, who now is two stops away from being your Frosty's champion. Yeah, Riddles heating up right now. The invincibility really getting the job done on some of these grabs. He's dodged like three explosions so far. Oh, and that Nikita lingered forever. Literally. Dodge the Wind God Fist, get a forward tilt for your trouble. Two stocks even all around. Crowd getting so loud for AK taking that stock. Once again, this is his region. So a majority of the crowd is behind his back. And we have such a decisive match taking place. Had to wait for the grenade. Good understanding of how the grenade impacts your advantage state here from Riddles. And he's winning the trades at the moment. And he gets a big kick, but no, no filler swing. Yeah, that has to be when you get hit in that Tekken hit stun where you're all yellow, it's got to be terrifying wondering what's going to take place next. And now where are you going? Woo! Whoa, what a cool combo. Nikita is on his trail, though. He makes it back to stage. Taking the words right out of my mouth. The explosion actually going to stop that uh, trajectory. Good respect of the grenades and the C4s from Riddles, who just waits for AK to eventually have to come down to Earth and then finds the aerial to take the stock. Yeah, I keep losing track of who has the lead here. There's so much volatile damage being thrown in both directions. Whoa! Two down smashes in a row, and Apollo Kage threads the needle between both of them to even this game. One stock each. Stock of champions here, Thwag. Yeah, who's gonna do it? This championship and the bracket reset is on the line. St. Louis chanting in the back. Yeah, Woo! catches the and roll. Does he get the stick off of it? He does. Look, there's a glowing Kazia, and it's not from Rage. That was a beautiful tech chase, but he does shield it. That's a little bit less of a threat inbound. He can take somewhat of a breath, but not too much of a breath, because this could be it. Gets, gets the, the tech chase. To for the reset, and there's the crowd popping off. We have one more set to go, folks. Holy moly. I couldn't even believe my eyes for a second. Oh, that's one of the classic snake tricks, right? The tech chase off of the down throw into up. So, man, that's like fundamental day one, 2018, Bushi at Midwest Mayhem Ultimate Smash. But it's going to pay off here for Apollo Kage, who it's, gets the win. It's such a unique down throw for that reason. It's such a, mm. It puts you in such a stressful situation as both the one who's doing the execution and the one receiving it. All right, all new set. Yeah, right back to small battlefield. Apollo Kai decided he wanted to do 30 damage to himself to start this game, which, fair. You are allowed to do that. Yeah, I respect it. That is in the rule book. He, he wanted the rage. Coping? 
There is no rule that says a dog cannot enter a Smash Ultimate. Right? Huge! Didn't try to follow it up, just waited patiently and let that up Smash rip. But here comes AK right back. Waiting for the high recoveries, and he's got a C4 stick to his name? Yeah. Did it transfer? No, yes. He Such like an texted. insane series of offstage interactions taking place. And you can thank Snake's plethora of explosions for that. Riddles has to have that, that young kid reaction time. I think he listens for the now and then tried to tech off of the side of the explosion. And that must have been what he tried to do in the previous attempt in uh, the last set. Right. That was so interesting. Yeah, that was such a hard instance to be in. But you gotta have insane reaction time to do that. Totally. And just game knowledge. If you haven't done the matchup and you don't tech the right way, you're just screwed. Mm -hmm. Oh, out of the C4, just immediate dash attack, creating space for AK. Yeah, ducks in, the roll creates a trade. They're both staring at each other with these two stocks, red percentages. Has to stay in shield longer because of that grenade that lingered on the platform longer. But oh, but the unfortunate, the grenade dropped, and that means that pretty easy window here for Riddles to get that clean confirmed to the update. No way. Good. That was brilliant. Good trade for Snake there. Knew he opted for that laser most times, and that it'd hold him in place for quite a long time. Apollo Kage capitalizing, and now they're both at last stock. Just taking that opportunity on the down throw to retreat, get center stage, get your neutral game started up. Yeah, he always has a grenade in hand, as snakes should. But <laughs> these explosions create the funniest interactions sometimes. Oh yeah, that looks super goofy. Right, it popped him out. Like, obviously he got hurt, but it, it dodged the projectile as a result. He's gonna find his way in Ooh. with the dash attack and the grenade. I thought that up air was certain to land. Although I don't think it would've been enough to KO, considering how heavy Kazuya is, but it looked good to me. Yeah, they're playing such a spaced out game. Riddles yeah. doesn't go in unless he knows it's time. Yeah, and then it's like he retreated all the way to the other side of SBF. Did not want to find that approach unless he absolutely had the angle. Shield so low from Riddles. Yeah, and a low shield is like candy to a snake player. C4 gonna get the job done. That low shield might have just been what caused the poke. I'm not sure if it was a shield drop or a poke, but what caused the uh, the poke? AK has all the momentum now in this grand finals. The crowd's behind him. Midwest's behind him. He's got game one in the bag. Right. This could be his tournament to lose now. Yeah, but it's not to say that Riddles can't do it. No stranger to three O's, especially in this, or reverse three O's in this top eight. Wouldn't be the first one he's done today. Yeah. And I mean, we're not even in a situation where it needs to be a reverse three O yet, but I'm just saying he's shown quite the clutch factor in this top eight. All right, going to the smallest stage, Smashville. Yeah, juggling some grenades, but da 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 right off the bat. An immediate stick into 90%. Man, AK, he, he can do no wrong at the moment. Yeah, dude, AK is on fire. Even when the rage becomes active. Okay, well, this will be something that you can do wrong. And he oh, missed the tech. Yeah, ah, that tech gonna, could have been huge. He's going to take that to the bank, though. Had to hold my breath for a second. He was looking monstrous for a second, though. And it's still a two-stock game. You had a huge lead and then missed attack, which is pretty tragic, but Right. But still there's still room to happen. be monstrous. Yeah, yeah. But, oh my gosh, Riddles can tack so much damage onto an early stock if the stars align for him. And avoiding all the tech chasing here on the Smashville platform. Riddles has control of that platform, and he does not look to relinquish it here. Oh, oh what a wow. snipe! Yeah, he waits under it, not because he needs it, but he knows if Snake is under there, he's way more prone to take damage. Okay. Two grabs in a row. And this is looking tough if you're Apollo Kage. Yeah, that damage added up so quickly. And you don't have a grenade here? Yeah, the grenade fell. Yeah. I think Riddles couldn't tell if it fell or not, so he, had, he couldn't just react. Is that it? That is. Yeah, the game is immediately over. Riddles, man. Rode the momentum after that tech was missed. That's Kazuya. He finds the buttons, yeah, presses them, and then you explode.
he had a, oh, this is tournament set now, and just turned on the burners the second half of that. Yeah, maybe he just needed the pressure. Yeah, yeah. Like, Honestly, think you'd think playing characters like that are harder under pressure, but some people, man, they're demons when the pressure. Both of these players sitting here on the stage, they have, you know, thousands and thousands of hours of labbing, right? Yeah, true that. They, they press these buttons millions of times each, so. Execution, not the problem. Three, two, not the Floral one. Fury song. Oh, I'm a fan. Of course you are. Big fan of Cuphead. Big fan of the production music list. Actually, Good yeah, list. we don't need a we don't need a super high stakes song until the game matches. This is a high stakes song. What are you talking about? You ever play Cuphead? That game yeah. is dope. But in terms of these gritty, hyper-real characters, come on. That's true. It will probably end on Tekken music. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But as this game goes, uh, the, just a couple scraps here and there. there. There was one pretty big Kazuya combo, but he couldn't like, confirm it into a KO or nothing. Right. But that just means the damage is very lopsided here. It can't yeah, high percent, but they're both at kill percent. Let's be real. And just as I say that, Riddles gets taken off the top. Star KO. Palo Kage takes the lead here in this Grand Finals reset. Oh, I like Dude. the idea, but just stuffed by the up B. Good stuff from Riddles, not falling victim to that that pressure on the shield that AKO trying to cook. Vertical kills all day, baby. Establishing again, just your little your little campground under these platforms if you can. Yeah, pitch the tent, do your thing, why not? I like the DI mix up there where Riddles try to turn around the combo. But instead everyone's gonna be living. Huge down Whoa. tilt, pushing him into the grenade that pushed him into the other grenade that set him up for the up air. That's last stock. AK finding all these vertical KOs here on small battlefield. Damage, damage, damage. His floral fury is unmatched, ah. Black. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> oh, no. The grenade saved him. You have to think Riddles would have gone off stage and tried to pressure a little bit more, but instead the grenade just had enough hit stun. That grenade blocked so he could run. He's stuck. And there you see the immediate go oh, to ledge. Oh, I see it, yeah. Yeah, the, the go to ledge, and it's also going for the invulnerability on the ledge, right? Yeah. It's good to have that in your pocket. And eventually the grenade does fall, or the C4 falls off. Rage online. Just snake things. Yeah, rage is going to be a huge factor on this last stock. It's really, you only need like two neutral wins at most, right, with your riddles, but they will not be afforded the opportunity as the up air is all three stocks for AK going to match point. Yeah, that was a match of vertical kills in general, but AK just showing love to that up air. The explosion conversions on deck, every single stock. Now Riddles has got to dig deep. Going back to Smashville, he found a lot of success on this stage in this set already, so not at all surprised. Yeah, deep breath for AK. See a lot of people discussing the match, front row. That's the St. Louis contingent for sure. They're yep. gonna get loud for their boy. But there might be a stage mobbing that happens if, uh, Literally. if we see an AK win. He's gonna crowd surf. Not actually, but it's likely with how crazy some of those St. Louis boys get. Hanging out high in the sky. Throws down some explosives Ooh. to kick things off. That demon down smash was so scary, but I know, again, he was waiting for it. AK has found a way to avoid those in this set. Riddle's looking for the stage. Yeah, neither of them want to commit to anything right now. They're both hanging out on different sides of the platform. R Riddle's not, yeah, uh, AK was stuck on the platform, so I think Riddle's needed to commit to something to just keep him from getting to the ground. But instead, now it's AK's playground here. Huge up tilt. Up tilt, spot dodge, up tilt. We're going back to 2018, but it's looking good for AK. Yeah, if you're AK, you're in a beautiful position right now. You have a little bit of a cushion on this stock. Well, you're too... you yeah. did. You had a... I what, mean... What's a lead to a Kazuya, right? Literally. D he DI'd that up, I think, because that's usually the, the drag down aerial, right? Yeah. That Kazuya wants to go for the, like, the semi spikes. Riddles was catching those ledge play attempts so well. Put so much damage onto AK. 
And now he's just going to try to find this kill as quickly as possible. Maybe AK will serve it up to him brilliantly with a grenade, but instead, uh, Riddles do not quite capitalize on that self explosion. I want the game five. I need the game five. I need Riddles to dig deep right now. Game 10, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Give me a game 10. And then game 15, or 13 for them of the, the tournament. I think 14. It was 3 1. It oh, yeah, 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 it was. It was. But still, it, that's a lot of games. Ooh. Yeah, the flow chart said he had to go. I know exactly where you're going to be, and this laser's going to last forever. Yep. Yeah, that, that was tough. He's tried it coming from low too many times to have tried it again. Riddles was on top of that. There might be another stick. Oh, no, I see the C4 on the ground. It, it's not a stick situation. It was hard to tell because of the rage glowing. It's like the exact same color as the, uh, the C4 glow. Definitely. And he's still got this rage. Oh, no. <laughs> you, you try to roll in on Akazia doing that? Yeah. OK, but C4 will be clutched on that second stock for AK. Final stock again. And he can shut the door right here, right now. Literally. And shield on life support. Crowd getting so loud right now. Oh, turn around. Maybe that a was spike attack? Huge. No way. Grenade covering Ooh. the ledge nicely. Rolls in. Remains safe. Riddles putting Apollo Kage in a terrible situation right now. He's going to hold this right side of the stage. Has to recover high. Has a pulled air dodge, but it gets AK out of trouble, although he has to recover yet again. Yeah, he sends him to the left side Ooh. of the stage. Yeah, and they're just taking turns trading. The explosion's live! And Riddles takes this to game 10. That up he was so smart from Riddles because not only would it cover that roll on, but also it just gets him out of the C4 trouble and then he can mix up onto the platform as well. So it, it, it did everything he wanted. It got him out of his sticky situation and it potentially created a kill. So very clutch for Riddles who sends it to game 10. Grand finals, Frosty Fosting 15. A champion will be decided right here, right now. What a set this has been so far. Yes, game 14 out of 15 possible between these two combatants. And here we go in Hollow Bastion. Yeah, this is the set that keeps on giving. I expect big things out of this last match here. Grenades flying. Okay. Apollo. Finally getting that tech towards the ledge off of the down throw. Yeah, that's huge. And Apollo Kage is controlling stage so nicely right now between the dash attack and the grenades juggling. He was able to position himself really nicely, but now Riddles has kind of found his footing. Yeah, Riddles used super armor moves that Kazuya has in abundance to force the issue back yeah. on the stage. But here comes AK again. He has himself a platform. Super Missed the stick, unfortunately. And that's OK. Super armor is the sheer will sort of solution to these oh, yeah. situations. Misses the up tilt, but gets disrupted out of his command grab. Doesn't lose the command grab, interestingly enough. Yeah, that is interesting. If I'm Snake, I'm saying, what a scam. <laughs> you press the button, man. You should pay for it. Right. Oh, there it is. There it is. Ooh! Now it's gone. Trading, glancing jabs each way, but that up air here will get the KO for yeah. Riddle's first blood in game 14. Yeah, threw him to the depths and caught the high recovery. That was excellent stuff by Riddles. And now he's getting mileage on this second stock, too. Yeah, that damage racks up in an instant, as we know. It can go both ways, though. There's no grenade in the pocket, but it's just going to be a back air here. Movement on display tries to get the highest cherry pick of all time. Doesn't quite get it, though. Apollo Kage going to take that stock with an up tilt. Spot dodge up tilt, helping out once again on the platform. How is AK going to get stage controls with a back throw and trying to mix up these dares? Yeah, it looked like he tried to drift off the stage with the downer to get even more off of it, but that served plenty. A couple of rolls is really going to help AK get back into the, the center sticky. stage. When do you blow it up? Okay, good. Oh, Paradox. huge. And the early up, he just gets super armor again. Helps sneak through an Akita missile. Yeah, Riddle's ducking and weaving through this arsenal so beautifully. Yeah, his versus Snake matchup experience. Seems very, very strong here. 
Yeah, and Apollo Kage just not holding, not letting up with the explosions at hand. Because as soon as he catches them in one, he gets those conversions we've seen all day. A really sneaky C4 using that aerial drift gives AK the stock lead in game 14. Yeah, falls off the platform, takes a little bit of damage. He's staying so low here under the platform. Riddles has to get this stock, stop the bleeding, with something crucial. The low profile on Snake's crouch gonna avoid damage a little longer. Yeah, he's avoided a couple of EWGFs just going for down tilts. And there, again, just using all the movement tricks in your arsenal. 219 versus Kazuya. Literally, Riddles using so many buttons trying to catch Apollo Kage in the air. None of them are quite hitting their mark. And as a result, Apollo Kage is holding onto his stock for so long, dies to his own Trust grenade. Trust no one, not even <laughs> yourself. Never let him know your next move. It was all calculated. <laughs> it was all intended. More trades are taking place. You don't want to trade right now. But it doesn't even matter anymore because the percents are practically equal. A any one hit could kill either way here, I feel like. Yeah, we're sitting at kill percent for sure for both players. Oh! Riddles, he's cooking! He had to go for an extra hit. He couldn't go for the up. He could from throw! What is the scramble? None oh. of them pressed a the button in that scramble. That is absolutely no. low! But Apollo Kage is going to fall and Riddles is your Frosty Fostings 15 champion. Such an unfortunate way to go out, but you got to hand it to Riddles for how he played those last stock scrambles, not pressing buttons when both were sent into the air and just acting accordingly every single time. Congratulations. Okay, now they're laughing about it. That, that <laughs> was, you could see it was such a high stress situation. Game five, both of them 120 plus percent. AK, you know, he had a couple of those grenades and, and C4s just go his own way there. He had some ideas, but as we say in Super Smash Brothers, what do we say? We take those. We take those. C'est la vie. <laughs> and Riddles holds on for dear life and find, gets across the finish line as your Frosty Fostings 15s champion. Congratulations to him. And that was very well earned for sure. 14 incredibly tense games and a couple of slobber knockers in the middle there where we had three stocks and et cetera. But man, what a great display of Smash from both those players. Apollo Kage gonna be your second place finisher? Yeah. That's a set. That's a set of all time. Yeah. That was, that was if I've ever set. seen one. Such a great set. In third, we have uh, Salt One. Yep. Falling just one under the uh, one under his seeding. He was seated as the number two seed, but AK made the uh, the two upsets, two upset victories. Fourth is gonna be Base Mage the Jigglypuff. I can't name what Base Mage's seed was off the top of my head. Also the four seed. So it we was had, the we four had seed? one, two, three, four okay. seeds in top four. It was a pretty. Uh, Pretty predictable tournament in that regard, I suppose. But I mean, you can't predict the actual matches themselves. I mean, they were such a highlight. Right. It's cool to get these invaders to the Midwest, level up the competition a little bit, mm -hmm. but also just create some really cool matchups and diversity in this yeah. scene in this what, sphere. What a fun character lineup! It was we a had time. Here. There, were, there were so many cool characters, so many aggro characters, going back and forth, swinging big heavy hits. Uh, in fifth place, we had Ned and Leon yep. tie for fifth. And in seventh, we had Iken. And uh, on the other side, who was it? I'm trying to recall. It was Iken and. Uh... Why am I not? Oh. Mm. It was whoever played Leon. I just can't remember. Uh, well, I was going to ask production to pull up the bracket, but they just walked away. They're setting up the uh, award ceremony, you guys. So we're going to have a camera up for that, and it's going to take a little bit of time. Yeah, we'll report back shortly, huh? Mm hmm. Leon. So oh, wait, wait, wait. It was Loaf. Oh, Loaf, right, right, Loaf. Loaf made... Man, it was Loaf the, it was the a... Battle of the Heavyweights, the villains, the Mario yeah. villains. Loaf made such a good loser's run, too. Starting the day in loser's bracket after losing in pools early to Toad. Only was able to get to seventh place, wasn't able to keep the Cinderella run alive, but Loaf from Minnesota. Sorry, I, I apologize for forgetting you, Loaf. Yeah. I feel really bad about it. That was the also, first set of, the of this block. One of the nicest kids. Yeah, 100%. Really ever, so. And really electric sets. Mm -hmm. Some of those combos were last in 15 minutes. And he uses... He uses mid-waft better than anyone, I swear. I think that was intentional, just to write, really like change the tempo and keep keep Leon off guard. Yeah. Uh, but if, if anything, this is a, a testament that the, the meta of Smash Ultimate is in a very aggressive advantage state-oriented place. And just like, like the, the strongest advantage states, man, they really they really showed up. Yeah, production confirming. We're, we're chilling here, guys, waiting for the awards ceremony to get ready. Don't go anywhere because uh, that would be great to see all of these players earn their medals at Frosty Foster. Yeah, I feel like there was a pretty good uh, 
there's a pretty good composition of DLC versus not DLC in this top eight. Mm -hmm. You had the Kazuya, the Sephiroth, the... I know there's the Jigglypuff, Snake, and Wario on the other side, and the Bowser. And, uh... I think that was really the only DLC we had. Oh, yeah, it was. No, no, Steve's, uh... No top level Steve's in attendance here. I know. Philosophies. I wore my we Minecraft couple, mask and everything. We had a couple high level Steve's who I, I don't think they quite made it that far in the bracket. But it's tough out here. There are, there are some really good Steve's in Chicago and in the Midwest, but they just didn't have the best day today. 10 a.m. pools, man. Or 10 a.m. top 48. That can be pretty early for yeah. some people. But it's pretty early top eight in general. Mm -hmm. Like if you're on the West Coast, we were starting at 11, which could be a treat for some people. Yeah, you you're, know? E you're eating lunch and chilling with us. Yeah. Well, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed the commentary, you can follow us on the Twitter.com. So I'm LordSturm473. And I'm Thwack here at Thwackify on Twitter. It's been so fun, guys. I've had a blast here at Frosty Fossing 15. And I hope you continue to watch the rest of the games that Frosty has to offer. Here's the award ceremony coming your way at Frosty Fossing's Smash Ultimate. In the world, the Ryu and Blue Icon. Also in seventh, all the way from Minnesota, one of the best Warios to ever do it, it's Loaf. <laughs> Tied for fifth place, King Koopa himself, the most notable Bowser out there, it's Leon. <laughs> also tied for fifth, the heart and soul of Chicago for over 10 years, the Sephiroth master, it's Ned. In, in fourth place, the best Jigglypuff player in the world, it's Base Mage. In third place, one of the best players out there, the Roy, the Cloud, the Salt Master, Salt One. In second place, one of the Midwest's heroes, when I say Scoobert, you say, it's Apollo Kage. And in first place, all the way from Canada, one of the best FGC players in the business, it's Liquid Zone Riddles. Once again, congratulations to all of the players who made top eight. Congratulations on an excellent tournament. If you are here for doubles, it will be in the Lilac Ballroom. That will be starting in about 10 minutes.